Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vertical Blue 2023, hosted by Garmin. We are super excited to be here again for day two of the competition. How are you feeling? Ready? Yeah, excited? Uh, very excited, yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if yesterday was anything to go on, that was a crazy <laughs> start to the comp. I think we had, what, uh, 11 red cards? Yes. Uh, six white cards and six three white yellows cards or and something. Three yellow. That is correct. Yeah, yeah, it was it was <laughs> quite a crazy day, honestly. Um, I think a lot of it was due to cloud cover, um, nerves on the first day, a lot of things going together. Um, always the production of anything on the first day can be a little bit stressful for the athletes and the production crew and everybody. But hopefully today we'll see some beautiful dives. I'm sure we will. We have some quite exciting ones coming your way. And yeah, yeah, more more big action coming today. A uh, few less divers, eh? But still, still some really impressive stuff going on. Yes, but, exactly. Uh, yeah. So per session today, we have uh, like one or two less divers, so it will be a little bit quicker sessions. We'll still have thirty-minute intervals between um, sessions, so there will be two thirty-minute intervals. So you can get yourself some popcorn, bathroom break, whatever <laughs> you need. <laughs> Cup of tea. Yeah, cup of tea, yeah. cup of coffee. So, <laughs> let's get back into the action. Yes. Um, so actually, we had a few qu questions yesterday, didn't we, about the red cards and the protocol and stuff. Uh -huh. So maybe we've got a little bit of time now, or should we stick between the next yes. next official top? Um, we or, have, or I think we, we right have now? about two minutes. Yeah. We can go ahead and okay. show we've your Okay. We've got a few. We've got a few props gadgets. for you guys. 
Uh, we'll we'll wait until after Tetsuo's dive. So Tetsuo Hara of Japan, he is actually the oldest competitor in the competition. He right? is. He is yeah. 56. Um, Unbelievable scenes. To official top. And still hammering down 20, 90 more meters. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah, unbelievable, absolute, isn't it? Absolutely impressive. Yeah, get me on the guy's regime. Need to find out <laughs> what he's doing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Actually, I do remember last year the Japanese team was posting quite a few photos of the food that they were cooking here on oh Long Island. God. And while there's not too much on the island, their meals looked minute, exquisite. Like basically like having a private gourmet <sighs> chef with them. God. So man. maybe maybe it's the diet that that yeah. keeps them so young. And obviously free diving too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope the fruit diving is a big part of it because uh, I'm not very good at co cooking Japanese food. So. <laughs> yeah, so Tatsuo was a beautiful athlete to watch last year as well. One minute. He definitely struck my eye in terms of his form and grace in the water. And I've been seeing him train a little bit leading up to this competition. Uh, he actually didn't arrive as early as some of the other competitors, so he's had a little bit less time to acclimate to the water here. However, he is a very versatile athlete, so I expect nothing but the best for him. 30 seconds. He's looking good, he's looking calm. He's, got, he's gone for the fluid goggles as well. 20. Is he sitting on a float? I think he's sitting on a float. Ten. Huh? Um, I th yeah. Five. He might four, just be toe grabbing three, the cord. Two. One. one. Official top. Plus one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. There we see him seven, doing his eight, packing. Nine. Ten. Doing quite a bit. Yeah, lot, lots of packs. That was a lot, wasn't yeah. it? And Tetsuo there he goes. Hara, Japan, constant weight 91 meters, three minutes and two seconds. Beautiful kick, huh? Yeah, really, really nice, really fluid. A little bit meters. stronger looking in the front kick almost, but actually mm. it is it is fairly even. Yeah. But yeah, really, even. really utilizing that monofin. Meters propelling himself down. He just transitioned from arrow Stand to hands seconds. by his side. Looking extremely relaxed. That's free Come fall. on, Tetsuo. Let's go. You see how concave his stomach is? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's something I remember very well from last year. He was one of the divers that you could see it so, so well. You yeah, can see. also see it quite you well. see his organs. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, Davide Carrera, you can also see yeah. fairly well. Yeah. Alex Linus also. Mm. Yeah, look at him. Oh, yeah, you could eat, eat your cereal out of that, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's also one reason that it's so important to be flexible within your freediving. Now, that doesn't necessarily mm. mean you have to be stretching every day and making sure your lung flexibility is x amount um mm -hmm. but the more repetitive dives the deeper diving you go you do need to make sure that you are having adequate flexibility in order for your body to compensate to the pressure for the depth that's right yeah it's kind of it's, it's that that flexibility and then also um being able to relax enough that you let the hydrostatic pressure just push up against the diaphragm against the body right? exactly and um a lot of people, I think, when they're beginning in free diving, they, they tend to forget that and they're tensing their abs. Everyone's doing crunches all the time or something. <laughs> and you just got to be super relaxed. You know? Exactly, yes. <laughs> okay, and look at that. Smaller kicks on the way up. So he'll have some a little bit less amplitude, but that'll enable him to be more streamlined during the most negative part of his dive. 
Yeah, beautiful arrow position. <laughs> He's done it before, that's for sure. <laughs> so, I've sneakily been looking at the sniff, the stiffness of all of the monofins around the competitors, because I recently bought one and broke it immediately. So I cried a lot about that. But um, most of the athletes are taking like a very soft blade, right? They have like a, a you know, soft or soft medium stiffness blade. And I think yes. for deeper diving, that's what you want, right? Yes, I think it does help a lot to have, um, mm -hmm. this enables you to create less of a lactic buildup in your legs um, while still getting a efficient enough amount of propulsion for your dive. If you go with something too um, stiff, okay, come on Tetsuo, come on Tetsuo. Oh, he's very unboxing. Okay. Oh, he had that nose clip on very strong. <laughs> Took him yeah. from the safeties to get off. I'm sorry. Yeah, that'll be a red card. Yeah. Yeah, so that was just a, another oh, surface, so surface blackout. Yeah. yeah, he will receive a red card for that dive. He was so, so close. You could see him yeah. uh, just about two, three meters down, starting to get a little bit shaky on his way up, mm -hmm. um, kind of losing, breaking his form quite a bit. But then as soon as he grabbed the line at the surface, he did do some recovery breaths. Mm -hmm. However, it wasn't quite enough to keep him from dipping under the water. Yeah. So unfortunately, another red card. However, this is Tetsuo's yeah. first day of competition, so he could be experiencing as well some of those first day kind of nerves. Yeah, maybe some nerves. He looks fine now, doesn't he? He's, he's, he's all good. Yeah. He's sitting on the platform, happy. So yeah, he's recovered. Exactly. Um, super, super quick little, little sleep on the surface. But yeah, he's doing really, really well now. OK, well. Okay, so we have had a few questions about the surface protocols um, yes. and actually case in point right here. So, exactly. Brought some props. I'm going to show you how it's meant to be done properly. Uh, I'll let Elliot okay, talk through it and I'm going to goggle up. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so we've been seeing quite a bit of athletes wearing fluid goggles like these, as well as a nose clip. They come in many different forms. And so essentially, we'll run through the surface protocol. Yeah, we do have the judge in the booth. Um, but so essentially, you come out of the water, do your hook breathing. Mm -hmm. Give the okay sign. And then say, I'm okay. And then say, I'm okay. Exactly. So he <laughs> and we got a white card from the judge. <laughs> so once again, protocol, once you leave the water and begin to remove your facial equipment, that's when the protocol starts. And then you will signal, I'm okay. Uh, and then say, I'm okay after. Okay. And you nice. have about 15 seconds to do this process. All right, back to the divers, but that was just a quick little recap for you guys, a little closer visual, because sometimes it's a little bit hard to see so quickly and in the action what exactly the protocol is. You can also find all of the rules um, on the ADA website. There's a little handbook about it if you have more curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I've got a white card from it. That's my first white card, <laughs> by the way, from a judge. So Super. pretty happy with that. Can't believe Amazing. it. Amazing. First attempt as well. <laughs> wow, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we now have Wen He Sung Wan. I really hope I am saying that name somewhat correctly. And he will be diving under the One Ocean flag.
two minutes to official top. Okay, so it seems like some of you enjoyed our little explanation of the protocol. <laughs> <laughs> little demo. Yeah. yeah. If you if you want any more questions answered, please let us know in the chat. We would be happy to answer any of your questions about a specific athlete, a certain technique, what equipment they're using, all of the above. One anything anything seconds. goes, mostly. Yeah, so Wen is here actually with uh, <laughs> Wen is here with uh, four other teammates, I believe, um, and they're all training with their coach Anthony. Um, so they've been traveling together, training together, living together, diving together. One minute. Yeah, they've they've had a pretty good camaraderie so far and it's really great to see them training together here getting used to the water and they are super supportive of each other which is really really beautiful to see and their coach has been doing an excellent job super nice guy as well anthony yeah frenchman so you know he's got some knowledge on the sport <laughs> so seems to have a natural tendency seconds. to just be better at it you know <laughs> Pains me to say it as a Brit, but <laughs> could be true. It. Could be true. <laughs> Maybe it's in the genes. Yeah, that is something in the water or something. Like Ten. So Five, we've had a little four, questionnaire about three, what the official top two, is. One. So um, official top plus the official one, top. Two, Three, four, five, goes. six, um, seven. When the official one, top I pay. is... Weight, you have generally around minutes five Sorry, minutes just... until the start of your official top. Each competition, it kind of varies, but it is nice to give the athletes at least two minutes of a proper breathe-up mm -hmm. before their official top starts. Um, like I said, this can vary depending on the situation with the diver previous to you um, or the competition Close rules. Back, and then the official top Walking after it is called, you have 30 seconds to submerse your airways and begin your dive. So this is usually the moment back. once they call official top, we've been seeing a lot of the athletes begin their packing and then they'll be calling out a series of number increments um, like plus seconds. one, two, three, four, five, meters. and then plus 10 plus 20, plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And this are, right. these are reference points for the athletes to know when they need to take their final breath. If they, for some reason, do not make their dive within the 30 seconds and they dive like at 30 <laughs> seconds mm -hmm. after, that will be a disqualified dive. That's right. 80 meters. Okay, Let's now he is on his way back up. Looks like a super smooth descent, and now he's on a very nice ascent. You can see that kick he's having, controlled, even, very nice. Beautiful locked top half of his body as well. He's got a really nice uh, arrow position. Super steady, you know. Fifty meters. Two minutes. Forty meters. Two minutes and ten. Arms have come down now. Probably a bit more relaxation. Thirty meters first safety. Oh, back up. Didn't want it. <laughs> nice dive. Great kicking. Lovely pace, lovely tempo. Yes. Yes. It's looking really okay, strong. Okay, just it? now approaching, approaching the surface shortly. Ten meters. Okay, why do some athletes use the monofins and some do not? So there is disciplines within freediving, within the constant weight realm of freediving, which is what this competition is based on. Okay, there are four disciplines. 
good. I'm okay. Okay, he Strong. gave the signal. Strong surface protocol there. Yeah. So yeah, he see. looks really, really fresh at the surface. But right there, that's, you know, he's got the order right. He's come up, nose clip off, given the okay signal, and then said the words. And that's that's what the judges are looking for, and they want to do that, looking straight at them. And if they do that, that's a white card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, nice. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Okay, uh, so back to explanation of why some use mono and some do not. Um, there is four disciplines uh, within this competition. There is constant weight, which is normally known as with a mono fin. However, you can choose to use bi fins in this discipline. However, if you are going up against athletes that are using a monofin and you choose to do bifins, the monofin has a lot more propulsion and we usually see deeper depths with the monofin than with the bifins. Um, and then there is no fins, which is like the frog swim down and up, but also very beautiful. And then we have free immersion, which is pulling on the line down and up. And so, yeah, out of those four disciplines, the athletes can choose the day before, before their announcements, what they would like to do for the next day. And then that will be their essentially scheduled dive. Um, within their announcements, they announce their depth and their relative time frame for the safeties to have an idea of what their job needs to be in the water. Um, hopefully that kind of answered what you were asking about. Yeah, nice. And and also, um, in this competition, the constant weight is just one category, and there is no separate category for constant weight bifins, which uh, yes. actually in, in other competitions, they do have a separate category, Five don't minutes. they? So um, in this competition, yeah, you, you can only get points in constant weight, and it's either because you do bifins or with the monofin. Correct, correct. Yes. Which I think... There's a maybe a slight bias there towards the monofin because, like you say, you tend to see deeper dives with the with the monofin, right? Yes, this is this is true. Yeah. However, if you do do a record or something like we saw Arnaud do yesterday with bifins, that is still counted in the um, official rankings worldwide, whether it be an ADA or a CMAS competition. Yeah. <sighs> Hell of a dive that was. <laughs> yes, that God, was very very a, impressive. Beast, isn't he? Yeah, I was talking to him afterwards, and he was like, um, "You know, congratulations, obviously." And then, uh, yeah, he's like, "Yeah, I'll probably just chill out now." For the competition, <laughs> sort of work's done, really, isn't it? You know? Oh wow, wow, well, wow! Well. Yeah, he's he's done that in the past before. Yeah. Um, which which does make sense. I mean, if you if you have one goal in mind and you're training to reach that goal, and then you mm. finally reach it, like you should reward yourself. Um, even if we we might see some other competitors try to reach or match that, and if so, then we might see Arnaud back back on the stage, um, yeah. going to push a little bit harder. But also, it is kind of nice once you do set a record to let the rest kind of catch up and then maybe break that record and then it creates this very interesting competitive atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, there's probably only, I mean, who can take that back from him? One guy, right? <laughs> we know who it is. He'll be diving today. Yes, yes. So let's see. He's not responding in that discipline though. He's, he's doing a free immersion dive run. Yes, Three yes. Minutes. Yeah. Also a world record. <laughs> yes, it's coming up in the second session, yeah. Okay, so anyway. now we have Amber Burke. She will be doing constant weight. We saw her, uh, did, yeah, we saw her do a beautiful um, uh, no-fins dive yesterday with a white card. She had an incredibly clean surface protocol. So her yeah, competition is it, starting off, yeah, starting off very well for Amber. Yeah, she's a solid diver. Also very coordinated, which I do appreciate. <laughs> Lots of gold and green reflecting the Australian flag. Even yes. on the monofin too. We like that. Yeah, exactly. And then her big pink neck pillow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to tie it all together. <laughs> That's the cherry on top, uh, like you said about very the other cute. day. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. give it some free diving charm. <laughs> yeah, Two yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. to official top. So Amber, for those of you that may not know, uh, has quite the strong following on TikTok. And she posts very, very informative videos regarding free diving. So she'll explain her use of the fluid goggles, the nose clip, different disciplines, different areas that she's competing, different competition environments and everything. So if you are interested about anything else that maybe we don't cover, her page is actually a really minute, fun way to seconds. learn about some free diving. One minute. Looking nice and relaxed. She had a minute call, now she's putting the nose clip on. Mm -hmm. I have that same nose clip. There you go. <laughs> Destined for greatness now. <laughs> exactly, I'm sending her good energy vibes. Yeah. Thirty seconds. A little bit calmer today, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. The wind. conditions are quite nice, and I actually think the visibility bit has been a little bit 20. better already. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll see during Amber's dive how how it looks through the dive eye. But the first yeah. two dives, it's looked really, really strong. Ten. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Official top plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down she goes. Amber there we Burke. go. Australia, constant weight, 79 meters, two minutes and 50 seconds. Nice so, relaxed position, hands down by the side, yeah. Yeah, really, really beautiful. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but Amber did a back dive to start her dive, which is something we don't see from really any other athlete, which is, yeah. I think it's a really beautiful way to enter the water. I saw her do it yesterday for her no fins dive, and I just thought, wow, what a, what a beautiful entry to the water. And I've tried a back dive myself a couple of times in the water, and it's just not as graceful. So. She <laughs> she does a very beautiful job with that. <laughs> yeah, she's probably practiced it. That's that's nice actually. That's kind of like um, you know when you do free immersion and you go over on your back and pull down. Exactly. I, I really like that entry actually. That I always yeah. do. Yeah. Exactly. It's very comfortable. It's a very good way to keep that solid relaxation because mm. oftentimes when you're starting on your back, you flip over to one side or the other, or if you're in a seated position, then you have that. Um, shock of hitting the water. Okay, so we're seeing her go nice and controlled. She's also choosing to grab on to the end of her lanyard, probably just to feel the line and be close and to the canyon. Just so you get the tag there, two grabs. Yeah, she's got it. so she <laughs> had to do a double take there. Yeah. Hopefully she'll be able to keep her relaxation. She has been working a lot with her equalizing, I know. There's a tool you can use called an auto vent to help practice um, like mouthfill techniques and just general frenzel equalization. And I know she's been working pretty strongly with that um, nearly every day to make sure her equalizing is very well tuned in. And it seems that she has done so. So there's a question here, can you do a dolphin kick in constant weight when using bifins? And I think you can actually, yeah. So uh, you would be able to do that and then it would, because it, it will falls under the constant weight category, it would it would count as a constant weight dive, not a constant weight bifin dive. Yes, yep. yes. I am pretty sure we can double check, but if you announce just constant weight, yes, you are allowed to do a dolphin kick. However, in this competition, you are allowed to announce constant weight by fins, but if that is your announcement, then I believe you are not allowed to do the dolphin kick. Correct. Yeah. 
That's right. Okay, look at that. Super fresh, Perfect. doing her proper recovery breaths. That is the tag. Double grab, <laughs> but she got it. Big smile. Yes, Amber. God, I always get nervous in this part for like. <laughs> I think everybody can. Yeah, ask. there it is. There it is. Lovely uh, dive. Amazing job, Amber. So that will be two white cards for two her cards, for the yeah. first two days. She's tomorrow, off to a great start. I, I do believe tomorrow she's resting, so she'll have a well-deserved rest day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, well earned. Well earned. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Mate, and her no fins yesterday is no joke. She did 65 meters. I mean, yes. that's, that's huge. Huge no fins. Yes, and I, I do believe that we will be seeing another no fins performance for her. I think she very much enjoys that discipline, so yeah, she likes it, it. It'll be it'll be nice to have that broadcasted. Look at her, she's beaming. Yes. Beaming. Congratulations, that's really cool. Yes. Okay, so we did get a question about the One Ocean flag. And I just wanted to touch quickly uh, the background of that. So the One Ocean is essentially a way to create an even playing field. As this is a huge international competition, we have athletes coming from 27 different countries, I believe. 26, so, 27, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so with, with out of the things that are in our control, um, wars, whatever you have it, um, there have been some agreements made between the organizations of the like sports organizations such as ADA, CMAS, um, to have certain competitors compete under a flag that represents essentially all the athletes or all of the world. So if the athlete chooses to uh, dive under the One Ocean flag, they're basically uh, representing the world, essentially, mm -hmm. um, or the ocean, One Ocean. Um, so in a way, it's like a nice sentiment that we're all in this sport together, and apart from our own countries, who we do want to represent, we also want to represent just the world of freediving, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's just about a oneness and, you know, dissolving boundaries and borders and being one one people exactly yes okay so now we have coming to the water miss kate sadurska of kate ukraine sadurska. Yes. and we have a quick recap recap of amber burke delicate delicately holding yes, it out there super. yeah doesn't that just it's like the lightest touch yeah, she has the. She got the tag, second second time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I mean, really it can be from her. quite hard to see the tag at the bottom plate, and yeah, also no the tags. The tags, I believe, are black. They're black. As so, well, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that makes it even <laughs> even more <laughs> yeah. complicated. Just. They just. Just because <laughs> free diving to these depths is not hard enough. <laughs> what what we've decided is that we're going to have black tags at the bottom of a black hole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we good. just have to make it a little bit more challenging. <laughs> test <laughs> test oh. your brain capacity at depth. That's right. <laughs> ah, I I love her suit so much. When it's I saw colors, her yeah. training the first day, I was like, oh my gosh, the colors are really nice, and it's nice to see. Uh, free diving equipment with some like pizzazz to it. Yeah. You know, yeah, which I think there's more like and more. <laughs> yeah, people are finding a bit more style. It's good. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. We love, we love it. So Kate will be going for a national record uh, this morning, 74 meters, which is within arm's reach of the No Fins world record for women. Uh, worth noting.
Hello, Two Cassandra. To official top. <laughs> nice. Shout out to the friends. Uh, they're probably all the way over in Camotes in Philippines. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Cassandra and Jimmy. <laughs> So Kate is taking the um, kind of prone approach that seconds. William was talking about yesterday to do her breed up. Yeah, this is one of the most relaxed ways you can breathe up for your dive and then fall into your dive. Mm -hmm. Very, very comfortable. And yeah, if you have the correct flotation, it can give your lungs a little bit extra space um, to fill. Whereas if you're sitting or submerged further in the water, you already have a little bit of compression from the water around, so you may not be able to inflate as much as you would like. So this position with flotation enables you to do so. Yeah, just a bit less hydrostatic pressure. See, she's just taking a big breath in there. She's got big lungs on her. <laughs> yeah, she is also a very beautiful diver. Yeah. Well, she was a synchronized swimmer, seconds. right? Before yes. she started getting into freediving. Yeah. Uh, Olympic standard? Uh, I believe, at least, at least to the national standard. level. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so most of her youth was spent doing that stuff. And obviously, um, you know, it's synchronized swimming. It's all about holding your breath and being elegant underwater so um, yes exactly five, I can imagine four, she has a really three, really good setting two, I actually one. saw her doing Official some top. synchronized one, swimming two, things uh, with three, one of the other competitors four, Shaika in the water five, a couple days ago six, before the competition seven, and it was eight, absolutely beautiful nine, down she goes nice pointed toes yes the ballerina toes <laughs> yes, the <laughs> form on this is stunning. Very, very Perfect. stunning. Yeah. You can she she has the rhythm changing a little bit from poles being at the same time to now being distance a little bit between the arm pole and the leg kick. As she's getting more negatively buoyant. Yeah, she has a very, very beautiful arrow position. Completely straight. <sighs> Such good flexibility. Yeah, textbook. That's right. Pulling all the way down, actually, 44 meters. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, an extra leg kick, taking it through 50, so... And there you see the feet. <laughs> the, the rudders. The rudders. The rudders are back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you watch Kate, you know, this is its almost as good as it gets, isn't it, for this discipline. She's really a master at this. She looks so relaxed. She really is, yeah. Just she's going meters. strong. She's got a little problem with EQ, maybe, but she's maybe, made it. But nice. She just made it, yep. And return. Meters. Just saw her going for the nose clip there. You see that? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little extra squeeze. Try to get one last equalization out. I know for so many athletes, it's such an amazing feeling when you can do your last equalization on the plate. On the ball, yeah. Because then you're like, ah, Very relaxing. Man, I have, I have another couple meters in me for sure, and mm. that's, that's such a nice feeling. It's good, for, good for the mindset, isn't it? When you turn and <laughs> you've got full air at the bottom, you're like, ah, oh, exactly. I had it easy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, she's looking super strong. Look at that focus. 40 meters. And you can see she does a little um, shoulder shrug also to kind of reset each time for her arm pull. That's very interesting. We got mm. the close up of that. I don't think I've seen that many athletes doing that, but it does slight, does make sense. Slight dolphin kick as well sometimes on the feet. There it is, just after the arm pull. Bang. Yes, which is definitely something we see a lot of the no fins divers do even the free immersion divers once you start getting a little bit tired you'll mm -hmm. will start using your body in other ways to try to get as much uh, propulsion as possible 
as you're reaching the surface, but she's still looking it's super, It's kind of a newer strong. thing, though, isn't it? Actually, nah. I think Natalia Morchanova used to do that as well when she was she was I, the kind of pioneer of that, doing yeah, the dolphin kick, yeah. doing the, I believe the notions so. movement. And I think it does kind of come naturally as well, just yeah, as your body's good. kind of default movement. Yeah, that looked like a good protocol to me, but I'm not in charge of judging, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a very strong, tiring dive, but she does look fresh at the surface, not too, not too flushed. <laughs> Big smile. Yes, Ooh. there it is. And there you have it, a white card Unreal. for Katarina. National uh, record. Beautiful, beautiful CNF dive. Yeah, Amazing I'd job. Love to see that. that uh, was she'll really, be really super. Cool. She'll be super proud of herself for that, as she should be. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. uh, amazing. So that will be her first white card of this competition. This is her first day of competing. I believe she competes tomorrow as well. So off to a good start for her. Yeah, her and Amber on the white card train. Yes. Love to see it. Uh, congratulations. Look at that form. So relaxed. Yeah. Look how far she's going as well. You see that? Exactly. Like, oh, God. I don't yeah. want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We should, we should take some lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah going to need some lessons, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the comments so are blowing up with the support. Love to yeah, see that, guys. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, really, really nice one for Ukraine. Nice one for Katarina. Five minutes. Yeah. yeah, you guys, these comments are awesome. If you have more questions, keep them rolling. We love to hear from you. Great for us as well. It's a, it's a long format, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, yeah, true, true. we don't want to run out of things to say. <laughs> I don't think that'll be possible. <laughs> we got this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So who's up next? We've got Alex. Alex Guinness. Yes. Alex He's Guinness. lining up. De Colombia. Vamos, Alex. Vamos, Alex. Is that good? How's my Spanish? Mm -hmm. Pretty terrible. There you go. <laughs> yeah. One word at a time. I've lived in Mexico for about six months. Can't speak a lick of Spanish. It's pretty <laughs> embarrassing. But we'll work on it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Four minutes. Yeah. Okay, ahora para Colombia hay cuatro minutos hasta el fisher top. Come on, Alex. Let's, uh, let's hope he has a bit more joy than yesterday. Let's work down the kinks. He'll be doing the same dive. That he did yes. uh, uh, yesterday morning or afternoon. He was yes. in the afternoon session. Yeah, yesterday he had an early turn, um, quite close to his mark. I believe it was around 60, no? Yeah, 60, um, 63, something like that. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully today everything goes smoothly. Mm -hmm. He has been getting over a bit of a cold that he had last week, and as many of you freedivers know, recovering from that. Um, we only have so much space in our eustachian tubes to equalize, so if there's any kind of mucus or fluid of any kind, it makes that near impossible. So hopefully he's Three all minutes. clear and ready for this dive. So, okay. Okay. I think we're going to head over to the beach for an interview with Amber. So we'll hear from her and uh, Francesca. Yes.
Francesca back here on the beach, and we just saw Katarina Sarduska of Ukraine make a beautiful no fins dive to 74 meters, and she was very quick. She was well in advance of her announced dive time. We're super stoked for her, but we're also super stoked for Amber Burke of Australia. She's saving the board. She's keeping it a little bit white. Amber, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good dive today and yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a PB for me today. So. Oh, we love nothing better than a PB. Yeah. So, Amber, um, many of us have known you through your accomplishments and just reading about it, seeing it. It's so nice to have you here in person for the first time. Yeah. Tell us what you think about the competition. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I feel a lot more relaxed. I don't know if it's the beach is just so beautiful or it's the length of the competition, but um, yeah, I'm not feeling the usual like competition stress. It's, it's just a really good vibe. I, I like the smaller number of athletes too. It's got a really nice place feel. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And we've got 37 athletes. I also see you're pretty kitted out with double K. Double K? Can't show Nice water bottle, nice snorkel, nice suit. Yeah, Shout out to June. Double K also provided the wetsuits for the safety. Thank you very much. Yeah, 10 double K. And uh, what are you going to do next? Um, yeah, good question. <laughs> I have to have a think about it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe go a bit deeper in CNF, hopefully. That would be really nice. All right. Well, thank you and congrats. Thank you. Back over to the dive. Okay. We are back to the booth. Ten. We have just a couple seconds until Alex begins Five, his dive. Four, it's just packing three, out. Two, one, official um, top. So we have had quite a lot of questions in the comments three, about uh, four, Katarina's five, dive and why that's not six, a world record. Seven. I think the absolute Alex, world record... Wait, is 75 or 76 meters for the women, but we're going to double check and update. All right. So Alex making a lovely descent. You know, he's got great form. We know this already. You can see his cheeks are puffed out there. He's taking a nice mouthfeel. Hopefully the new station tubes are a little bit looser, a bit more open today. And he'll find some joy. Hit his mark. 40 meters. 50 seconds. Yeah, so far looking really good. Very relaxed. Mom's Big rudders legs. on him as well. <laughs> 50 <Yes>. meters. <laughs> Turn. Okay, Oof. early turn. Ah, I feel for him. Yeah, another early turn for Alex. He's saving the legs, yeah, so he's doing free immersion. Just around 60 meters again. Just not quite coming together, is it, for him with the EQ at the minute. He's got everything else. We know he can do with the dives. He's fit as a fiddle. Um, and he's got the technique as, as he's displayed. It's just... Just getting some yeah. niggles with the EQ, probably because of this uh, illness he's been having. I feel bad for him. Okay. Ten meters. And he's just getting that assist again. Okay. Okay, so um, the official world record for the women's CNF is 75 meters, uh, and it's held by Mirella Kardasevic of Croatia. That is why um, Kate's dive was considered a national record, not a world record. Um, and, and Mirella did that dive in cash. 
Basque Free Diving World Cup in, doesn't say the date actually, but it will have been after, oh, 2022. Yeah. Correct. September However, last year. I do think that world record was done by um, CMAS standards, and in Vertical Blue, we are doing absolute world records, so you have mm -hmm. to be above both ADA and the CMAS records in order to count as the world record announced here. However, under ADA standards, I do believe that it will be written as world record. Correct, yeah. So the absolute world record now would be 76. Yes. Okay, we're going to the beach once again. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back at the beach and uh, Alex Yenis of Colombia just attempted his dive. He's been actually a little bit sick, so I think he's probably frustrated with that. But I'm here on the beach with Ben Collins from Garmin and Garmin Outdoor. And we are really glad that you're here both in person and as a sponsor. So tell us how you're finding the comp. Uh, it's really great so far. It's great to see some white cards today, some records and personal bests. Uh, just really proud to, to be supporting such an incredible event, such a beautiful location and a wonderful community of athletes here. So um, it's a great experience so far and looking forward to some more incredible dives. Now, Ben, I understand you're a tri-athlete um, and that you were helping to sort of incorporate and oversee some of the free diving features in the Garmin dive gauges. Can you tell me about what motivated and inspired your work there? Uh, I just, I, I love seeing people perform their best. You know, as an athlete, my goal has always been to, to see what I'm capable of, and um, I saw free diving as a great opportunity to help a uh, community with uh, uh, technology that can help them improve and, and achieve deeper, deeper feats. Well, it's going to be another banner day here at Dean's Blue Hole. The sun has come out. The sandflies have left. We've got a big world record coming up from Alexei Molchanov. What are you thinking about this number, 133? That is uh, hard to imagine. Uh, that's, that's very deep. I'm very excited to see it. Um, really hoping that he has an incredible dive and, um, and looking forward to seeing a white card at the end of it. Thank you, Ben, and back over to the platform to... Hello, guys. We are back at the platform. And we have just four minutes just announced for 1E to do the last dive of session one for day two of Vertical Blue. Come on, 1E. Yeah, Here we come go. Come on, 1E. Vamos, 1E. 1E is from uh, representing Peru. And he will be doing his debut dive of this competition. And this will be a constant weight. Yeah, he likes he likes the monofin, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah. So actually, when he, when he goes with a stiffer blade, I happen to know that his is uh, medium-hard stiffness. So he's... Uh, And uh, while he's not m moonlighting as a freediver, just casually, he's a brain surgeon and neuroscientist. So uh, he's got a few strings to his bow. <laughs> yes, so Wani is um, quite a good medic. Um, from what I understand, he has some very interesting explanations and he, throughout the years he's been doing a lot of studies relating directly to freediving and the effects of um, blackouts and depth and pressure on the brain. Um, I'm not sure if those studies have been published, but I'm sure that on the beach he could do an interview talking about it because he is very, very well educated um, within the world of freediving and the world of medicine. Yeah, he's a bit of an authority on the matter. Um, and uh, he's also like a little bit, sometimes I feel he gets hassled by some of the free divers. He loves it actually, but he's always um, 
helping people with little niggles if they've got medical needs or something. He's a very generous guy. Yes, exactly. Always <laughs> offering, up his time. offering up his time, you know. Yes, yes. But I, I, yeah. Sharing always. There we see Tori on the beach. Little snippet and Amber behind him. Tori will be going for a really awesome dive today too in the second session. Looking forward to that. Yeah, big dive from Tori George as well. One Continental record. Seconds. But first, just another national record for us yes. to knock on the head. It's <laughs> just just too much, isn't it? Uh, never enough. <laughs> never enough. Yeah, we love it. We love it. More. Give us more. <laughs> the way the sport has been developing throughout the One last minute. decade has really shown that human capabilities aren't even really discovered quite yet. Um, we do have a pretty good baseline for what we were capable of doing, but even in the last two years we've seen the percentage of depth go up by an incredible amount. It's very, very impressive to see that we are actually capable of doing something so extreme as this and succumbing to such like high seconds. pressures and yeah, mm -hmm. to me it's, it's a bit mind-boggling. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you just look at the roster yesterday and today, you know, pretty pretty well, competition's already kicking off with 100 meters now, whereas even five or maybe less years ago, it would have been maybe more like Ten, the 80s was probably a more common. Like, yeah, and now it's triple figures, you know, five, and um, four, some of the world three, records, I mean, are just two, astonishing. One. Look at all that air he's five, getting in there. He's got a big six, tank. Seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. See, see, almost twenty. Twenty thousand years. Nice. Constant weight sixty-three meters. Two minutes. National record attempt. <laughs> kind of doing s similar to uh, Davide there at the beginning. Sort of had his hands a little bit open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taking nice gliding kicks. Meters. Down the line, dropping his hands, getting into that 30 relaxation. Meters. Yeah. Forty meters. Yeah, he's not shy. He's still kicking. Yeah, maintaining that speed, getting into the free fall. Mm. We mentioned yesterday that about one meter per second is a good rate to go by, kind of average rate. This will change depending on your depth and your weights and your wetsuit. There we go, at the plate. Touchdown, yes. Come on, Wanny. There we see the difference in technique. Much more rapid, smaller amplitude kicks. Uh, he's not quite got the flexibility to get a really, really tight arrow, but it's working. It's looking good. Yeah, still able meters. to cut through the water. Oh, yeah, he's moving, isn't he? He's already at 30 meters. <laughs> really nice. Great Second kick he's got. Safety. Yes, yes. And having your arms up, too, not, right not only in the arrow for efficiency in the water, but it is just more comfortable with the monofin technique because mm. it is a little bit bigger of an undulation that you're doing with your body, so it's kind of a counterbalanced. That's it. Come on, Manny. Perfect. Good sign. Look clean. Look clean. Let's see. There's the tag. White card. Yes. Felicidades, Wani, de Peru. Yeah, congratulations, Wani. También record nacional. Muchas felicidades. So we've got a few questions here about the length of the competition. Uh, this is day two. 
There's three acts and three days in each act. So it'll be nine days of total competition over an 11 day period because they have a one day break in between each of those three days. So long, long format competition and, and the longest on the uh, roster, on the calendar, sorry. Yes, this is one of the longest consecutive day competitions and it is nice that there is two days of break between um, for the athletes to recover between the acts. <laughs> yes, that is correct. The headlamps are sometimes fixed with magnets. <laughs> um, oh. Yes, yeah, so Wani is a really, really strong competitor. He was here last year as well. And yeah, he's super, super nice. We go to dinner with him sometimes and he always is explaining his um, medical feats that he's doing. And he actually just recently went to Seattle for a conference and he was here training and then he flew back and then flew back to the competition. So he's a very busy man working all the time, but also an incredible competitor. Yeah. Okay, guys, so now we're going to head over to the beach with an interview with Katarina and Francesca. Thanks, guys. Dobra, Franco. I'm here with Katya Starduska of Ukraine. And what a beautiful dive today. Tell us about your 74 meters, no fin. Um, it was a nice dive. Um, um, equalization could be better, but uh, it's the first competition day here, and uh, of course, um, everybody feels a bit uh, nervous on the first day. Um, yeah, but it was quite faster than uh, I announced, and um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's a new national record and a new IW record. Um, it's like I never did sport like this before, so yeah, I'm quite excited. And, um, also, like my um, goal here is to represent Ukraine um, in the best possible way. So um, I hope uh, <laughs> it works. <laughs> you are definitely a great representation, not just for Ukraine, but for all of the free divers. And you were super speedy today. And so, how will you reward yourself for making this accomplishment? Will you relax? Will you have a beer? What will you do? No, 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 not beer yet. Uh, I'm still waiting. I had a birthday a few days ago, and uh, I'm waiting for to celebrate it after. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I will have some food and I'll reward myself for the, the good rest because tomorrow I'm diving again. And um, yeah, I also wanted to, to just say happy birthday to my coach, uh, Samuel Zaranko. Today he picked up the announcement, and I hope he's happy. <laughs> We have a song here. I don't know if you know this. No. Samo, 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 Samo. I will sing it later. <laughs> Happy birthday, Samo. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Congratulations. Any last things to say before we go to yeah, break? Yeah, sure. I, I really uh, want to thank uh, everyone who supports me. It's my family, uh, my sponsors, Triton. They're always with me. Um, our free diving community, I'm sure they are watching us uh, tonight, this evening. And um, I want to thank everyone all over the world, all free diving centers, the Hub Free Divers, uh, Free Diver Lat, uh, Free Diving Sharm El Sheikh. <laughs> Everywhere when I've been diving and training for this, um, um, who was on my road here, I'm really thankful. And Slava um, Ukraini! Thank you. Congratulations. See you in a little bit. Uh, beautiful, beautiful interview by Katarina. Thank you, Francesca. That really was a phenomenal dive that she just performed. Incredible dive, yeah. And um, yeah, she deserves all that happiness and success. She's worked really hard for it. So great to see. Um, just before we break, I just wanted to say a quick word about a friend in need um, who's also a prominent figure in the freedive community in Dominica. Um, my man, John Fain of Great Britain. Um, he recently suffered a pretty tragic 
um, injury while he was climbing a mango tree, something he's done hundreds of times, uh, and he's shattered his T11 vertebrae. So he's in a critical condition. There is a GoFundMe um, that uh, some of our, his friends have put together. So we're trying to get as much money together as we can. If you can't donate, please share. If you know John, you know that he's an integral part of the community there and um, and also in the freediving community more generally. Anyone who's trained there has been touched by him. So um, my, you know, my best wishes go out to him. I want him wishing a speedy recovery. Um, we're going to drop the link in somewhere on this uh, YouTube channel. And, you know, if you can't donate, please share. Let's raise some awareness. He's already raised so much money. The support he's, he's seen is amazing. And I think that's going to help him get a positive attitude and, and get the best care that he can when he gets back to the UK. So uh, thanks for listening to that. Um, and, yeah, if you can, dig deep. Thank you. See you guys after the break. Thank you.
speaker box loud Hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound
the speaker box loud Hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound
back. We are now at session two of day two of Vertical Blue by Garmin. And we have the most exciting dive of the day happening in just a couple minutes, I think less than one minute. Uh, we have Mr. Alexei Molchanov. The man in gold. One minute. <laughs> he's he's exactly. just set the rope. I mean, I watched I watched the guy setting the rope just now. <laughs> Crazy, 133 meters. He's going all the way down to the bottom of the hole almost. It's crazy. Yes, yes. We were counting the meters on the rope, then it's marked by like little tags every five meters, mm -hmm. and, or every meter, sorry. And it was impressive. We just kept counting and counting and counting. So, no, 100 and 133 is no, no easy feat. However, Alexi has been training 20. super, super well. He's very confident and I think looking very relaxed. Yesterday he was pretty relaxed as well. Did a little training dive. Um, so I think he should be good to go Four, this morning three, wish him all two, the best one Official come on alexi let's see it one, two, he's getting three, some nice shade four, by pepe salcedo also six, using one of the molten off spins good branding exactly yeah. okay so he's doing his packing and alexi is very Twins interesting five. watching when he does his packing he usually waits until the timer gets to about 10 seconds. He'll start his packing right as official top is called. Then he'll do a few packs, like very short, quick ones. Then he'll retain it, like hold his breath for a second, and then continue to pack. It's just to make sure he gets the relaxation between all of the times he does it. Lots of support for him here at the top. So uh, we're all rooting for you. Yes, let's, let's go, go Alexi. Alexi. 30 five, meters, five, already five, started five. a bit free fall. The rudders are on. Yeah, so he started that free fall quite early, actually, for mm. how deep this dive is. He started right about 30 meters. Uh, here we go. Here we go. He's doing a another pull here. Keep the speed up. 40 meters. He's on for it. He's doing, you know, a meter a second. He's got it. Look at his streamlining. It's just unbelievable. He's like a submarine. <laughs> yes. So, and actually, super crazy. His dive time announced is 4 minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs> yeah. We're going to run out of things to say. <sighs> if you wanted to check your breath hold, this is the dive to do it. <laughs> yes. 4 yes, minutes, yes. 40 seconds. Is this like the longest dive time ever announced? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think, think Matthew so. Molina may have uh, announced some longer dive times in, in the past. He's got a big tank. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yes. 90 meters. Yes. 100 meters. One minute 40. It's a bit tense on the surface, actually. You can feel. <laughs> yeah, there is. Feel the tension. Definitely some silence and everybody is circled around the platform, masks on. 120 meters. Still going down. <laughs> He's got good speed though, honestly. Two minutes. He does. There he is. He's having a look. Okay, there he goes. Woo! Oh my god. Down. Unbelievable scenes. Woo, let's go, Alexi. And now the long yeah. climb up. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing, guys. This isn't just 133 meters down. You have to go back up. <laughs> so, that's right. Oh. 266 meters. Insane, man. Nice long strokes. Smooth. It's looking good. Yeah, look how he just cuts through that water. He is having a knife-like position with his hands. Mm -hmm. Just trying to reduce the drag as much as possible. Every It's all marginal gains at this point. Exactly. Little kick coming in. Yeah. Little kick and still, still pretty deep. Eyes closed. He's in the zone. Oh, he's having a little look at the line. Three minutes, ten. Yeah, he's got a nice little undulation there. 
little bit of a dolphin kick, helping him out. He does. Still going at a oh, steady, steady pace. I can't believe pace. what... <laughs> 60 meters. So he'll, he'll have a bit of a... Bit of a slow down here, which is actually very common for Alexi. A lot of his dives, he chooses to slow down right around the 50 meter 50 mark meters. to just really, really conserve that oxygen. Um, the last couple, well, in his case, minutes or last block of 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> yeah. is is very important to meters. stay relaxed and to really mm. conserve literally That's as crazy. much oxygen as you possibly can. And just get that focus right, you know, so when he comes up, he can just, he's already thinking about things, getting his mind right. Yeah, exactly. And Alexi is extremely studied in nutrition and um, exercising and freediving in general. Um, he's reading articles all the time. Come on, Alexi. So oh, he has just very looking a little. He's taking some light pulls now. It's sort of long, but it's good. Yeah, definitely seeing how strong of a dive this is. Mook is bang on the. Se he's on okay. the second. Look at that. I can't believe what wow. I'm seeing. This is unbelievable. Recovering, recovering well. Oh we my Pepe God. coaching. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> he did a little little sigh of sigh of relief, I think. Ooh. And he has the tag. It's a white card. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh. Alexei oh Molchinov's done it again. Another wow. world record on the roster. Absolutely incredible. We just saw history being made in Apnea. What a Beautiful, strong, I don't even have words to describe that dive. That was absolutely amazing. I, I, <laughs> it's I'm unbelievable, shocked, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Like, like I am shocked and it, it's beautiful, but I also have been seeing him diving the days before and every single time he dives, I just am wowed by how he is on the surface and just how yeah, he presents so himself. so calm, isn't he? You yeah. can, I mean, you obviously you fancy him for it. He's the best in the world, right? But <laughs> that was just too calm, too collected. Yes, well done, Alexei. Alexei. Gave, us a, gave us a smile at the just booth. Give us a little <laughs> wink. Yeah, yeah, oh. exactly. Unbelievable, unbelievable scenes. Wow, wow. Very, very impressive. Comments are going off. Yes. I that think was that huge. I think that will definitely set the stage for a lot of athletes to get some high energy going. Um, he is an inspiration for so many people, myself included. I'm sure you yeah, included. Me too. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think the confidence level has just kind of skyrocketed. <laughs> I've got goosebumps. I know. Yeah, me <laughs> too. I mean, that was, that was amazing. That was absolute madness. Oh that was really, really, really beautiful. <sighs> wow. <laughs> wow. And what it's he announced four forty, I think he was four forty one. Yes. You know, he's planned it, he's figured it out. He's just knows exactly what he's doing. Like you were talking about, he slowed down in that fifty, sixty meter area. He probably felt the thermocline, right? That's that's about where the thermocline is in the hole and he's like, Good, I'm on the home yes. run here. Yes, home he's stretch. on track. He's good. Yeah, he's he's actually so methodical with his diving. He obviously um, trains like freely and listens to his body, but he has like Excel spreadsheets and um, regimens for eating certain ways. I've been making him a lot of eggs after training, which oh, yeah. <laughs> get that get that protein in after after the dives. But yeah, what a what a great athlete and what a great dive! Wow pillar of the sport i'll tell you something about alexei which i love is when you're around him he's super humble guy and he's great fun to be around he's always smiling and he keeps it very light even though he's doing these huge monster dives and and for a lot of other athletes there would maybe be a bit of an air of like nervousness or, or you know something like that right but he as soon as he's around everyone's just chilling out everyone's like oh yeah 
We're all good. Yes, you, you know? have a very great it. point. Even if even if he says he is a little nervous or he maybe not rested so well, he doesn't show it at all in yeah. the water. Like he is such it's a like strong, a sphinx. disciplined man that yeah, he just carries himself so well, and it's it's quite crazy i mean he has methodology to it but after a deep dive he does do some physical training he'll do some swimming around <laughs> yeah. in the water yeah. to move the the um, nitrogen through the blood ah, so okay. he doesn't get any toxicity from that which a lot of athletes yeah. we do see performing similarly go warm um, down get things moving get offload that but, nitrogen gas yeah but it is just still mind-boggling because a lot of athletes like after their dive they're like oh, okay i want to sleep and i want to eat and do nothing for the rest of the yeah. day and he, he does know when to properly rest as well but he's very very adamant about doing those exercises flushing yeah. that blood system all of that so and it obviously he's obviously he's doing something right so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. something's working <laughs> something's the working man <laughs> in gold another gold medal to yep. his name golden boy <laughs> i can't believe what i've just witnessed yes real. absolutely beautiful From okay now so switching yeah, gears a little bit keeping up our excitement however we have our next diver tori george with just about three minutes until his official top and tori was a dns uh, yesterday and he switched spots with uh, Pepe Salcedo to dive today and then Pepe will be diving tomorrow in Tori's position. Right, they had a little switch up, so he's got a spot now. Yes. And he's doing a continental record. You know, obviously on the back of a world record, not to be snuffed at, still a <laughs> very big dive ahead of him. Yes, 117, you're, you're close. You got this. Maybe next year we'll see some. I think next year's competitions are going to be full of very, very deep, very close competitive just, dives. Just, this year as well. It's better and better and better, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. it's a good point, actually. You know, for, for the girls, it's, it's been quite close at the top. Mm -hmm. I mean, Elenka and Alessia, you know, they're kind of up Two there all the time. To but top. then it, with the men, like you say, there's a bit of a broader gap. Yes, so, a little um, bit. It's good to see see the other athletes catching up and narrowing the field a little bit. Yes, exactly. And and obviously we do have Alexi's um, current world record for the monofin, which Davide <laughs> is also very close to. He's just a couple meters away. So it's that is foreseeable. Reach, yeah. However, we haven't seen Alexi perform a monofin dive One yet. So in training. In, uh, in training, we have a little bit, but okay. they, but, but, yeah. but in the, the actual comp competition yeah. stage. So yeah, I'm yeah. curious to see what he will announce for that, because yeah. maybe that'll set the set the bar mm. higher than we even know. You know. Right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. You kind of want to just grab his dive watch and see what he can do. Really, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That, exactly. It's yeah. Just, it's always go. just adds a meter, doesn't he? He's clever with go. it. Go spy on One his minute. trainings. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh, let me let me change the battery on your watch, mate. I'll just <laughs> Have a look and see what's going on there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's one way to get into the mind of a free diver, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Tori has become quite a strong competitor just in the last two years. He didn't compete last year here at Vertical Blue, but he was here training with a lot of the athletes. And he put on his first actual mon monofin, um, training monofin here and yeah his technique has improved substantially since then and he's been 20. competing in a lot of the asian cups um enjoying his time traveling and diving and yeah he's happy to be here this year yeah so hopefully we'll see him perform really well he did also mention he does perform a little bit better Five, under pressure four, so while three, sometimes his training two, dives may not one, go as intended top, um, one, he is two, excited for the three, kind of competitive four, push five, to mm -hmm. carry Six, him through seven come on tori let's see it tori george usa a man who danced his way to the depths Three minutes and 17 seconds. Continental record. Yeah, he's really mopped up his technique, actually, I have to say. Yes. Looking very nice. Yes, very, very good. He is also sponsored by Double K. So he's mm. wearing this wetsuit. 
Yeah, he's part of the Double K team, and they, that's a great little crew they got there, and they all support each other, and um, yeah, they're always doing lots of fun things together, and it's like a little family unit, isn't it? Yeah, they were doing some fun shooting days a couple yeah. days before the competition started, and yeah, they're, they're a big, big Double K family. 50 meters. 50 seconds. 60 meters. They're nice. looking super solid so far. One minute. Yeah, nice. So he's going quite yeah, at nice a free good fall. speed. Yeah, good position, nice knee bend, letting that monofin just slice through the water. 80 meters. Yeah, nice relaxed position. One minute 20. He's looking good. Come on, Tori. Hands tucked in, he's got his fingers tucked in, he's got wearing elastic bands around his thighs, tops of his thighs. Yeah, he looks very relaxed, very relaxed. Just having a little peek at the line, make sure he's on on track. Still looking very solid. You can see even his cheeks still look like they have plenty of air. Sometimes when... Up, hasn't he? Oh, okay. Oh, oh, just as I said that. <laughs> Oh, hopefully I didn't jinx that dive. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was having a bit of a glance up, wasn't he? So it yeah, tells me maybe some EQ. He's running out of air a little bit. Maybe he didn't get enough packs in or whatever it is. Yes. Now it's just about concentrating, relaxing. Sometimes when the dive goes a little bit wrong like that, where you're not quite there, you have to reset all the nerves at the bottom and and then you know get back on back on your form and and find that relaxation, you know. 70 meters for the ascent. It's coming up quick. Yeah, cruising. Mm. He has a Ferrari there on his feet, so. <laughs> He's a powerful man as well. 50 meters. Yes, very. very. <laughs> if any of you guys know Tori personally, you know he's quite the good dancer. He yeah, knows safety. all kinds of variations. <laughs> Salsa, bachata, <laughs> lots of Latin dancing. Um, and dancing in general, he's usually the one to bring the life to the party. He's a groover and a shaker, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. 10 meters. Safeties are with him. I think he's good. I just hope he has a nice clean. Here he comes. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Tori also asked us to Not wear this some. Tori, Tori, this way. Say it, say it. Go on, Tori. Go Good, on, some Tori. nice coaching. Uh, I think done by Pepe. Wanted to make sure that Tori was able to turn to face the judges to do the protocol. Okay. Well done, well done, Tori. Well recovered. Good job, Tori. Well recovered. Just had a little air problem there, didn't you? Yeah, so because of the early turn, um, but the proper surface protocol, he will be receiving a yellow card. So he will still get points for that dive. He managed to reach 111 meters. Still, wow, what an <laughs> incredible dive nonetheless. Um, not quite to his goal today, but he does have many more days of competition. He's got time. He's got time to figure it out. Yes. We know he can do it. And we, we have your headbands, Tori. He asked us to wear some headbands yeah. in <laughs> yeah. support of him. We're banded up. <laughs> We're banded up. Get it yes. on. Get it on. Okay, get it on. Over, it's over the Oh, you're doing it over there. Thing. Oh, it's wow. Okay. Look, yeah, I've I'll committed. <laughs> this is going to be on. We love we you, Tori. Go. Good job, Tori. <laughs> Nice work, mate. Uh, nice work. Yeah. Uh, it's fun to have have yeah, little little gifts from the athletes. They're like their little good luck <laughs> charms. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it works yeah, over there. You're the, pulling it off, Elliot. I don't know. <laughs> it's good for me. It hides the bold patches that are coming in under yeah. here. So it's good. Okay. Well, we're going to head over to the beach now to have an awesome interview with Alexi, our world record. What is left to say except wow? 
Hey everybody, Francesca back at the beach. This man needs no introduction. Alexei Molchanov just completed a strong, clean, crystal crispy clean 133. How are you feeling? Well, I feel tired. That was, I think it was pretty long dive. It was 440 on my watch, maybe it was like 445. 442. 442. And overall, I felt strong. I think uh, it was, uh, I felt clean as well, but I could feel like by the end, like it was already like the build up of CO2, build up of like lactate was there. So it's not my favorite discipline. <laughs> I just like like pins much more, like water pin, bike pins. But yeah, I think it's a good like way to start the competition for me for pre immersion. And then I progress to the next ones, the ones that I like more. So you have a massive breath hold, obviously. I heard you mentioning that you're being strategic on the way up in terms of as you get nearer to the surface, you slow down a little. Tell us about that. Well, I thought the buoyancy started to increase, like towards. I was around 20, 30, then I saw the safety as well, and then I just let oh, this buoyancy help me a little bit and I stopped pulling like as actively. I'll check the profile and I'll see the uh, like my record, like live stream recording, but I, that's what I usually do is like I slow down a little bit to the surface, even though you want to sort of finish quick and uh, like maybe accelerate a little bit, I, sl I stop myself from doing that, that's something I think I, I like to do. So I'm going to do what I'm not supposed to do. I'm going to break the fourth wall. There's a huge production here filming you, like the rest of us, filming you, filming you. How does that factor into your mental state? I think it doesn't because from all these competitions and the years of competing, I, I just really focus on my like, routines. I focus on my preparation breathing and on how to like, stay really focused before the dive, during the dive. So today it was perfect. I didn't really think about anything. Sometimes you you can be distracted and like think about the dive I'm following you. You're like, oh, all this like people watching me right now. If I do something wrong, it's gonna be on camera, live. So sometimes there are these thoughts, but not today. Today was pretty, uh, I was very focused and I, I didn't get distracted to like to anything else. Just a couple of last quick thoughts. Uh, tell us about Arno Gerald on your team, Moksinovs. Are you going to be t playing tennis as well as freediving while you're here? Team ping pong or? Yes, volleying. I don't know. I, well, biking is, because I did it already early in the year, it's not the like, discipline I will focus first, so I'll have some other ones to focus on. And then if I have time, I will do that, but uh, that's not, not the priority. Not the priority yet. And anyone you want to say hello to back at home watching? Oh, to my family, of course. And uh, I don't know if Max is yet <laughs> like realizing what I'm doing here. He's doing how. But uh, hi to Max, hi to my wife, and to the whole team, like team from Motionals co Company who supports me with all the great gear and all the support as well. And to everyone like who is cheering for me and who enjoys the way I dive. So happy to happy to dive to show you. Performances and I'll do more. Thank you, Alexi. Congrats. You're welcome. Back to the dives. Okay, we were zooming in on our monitor to watch Alexi better, but what a what a beautiful. We just can't with Alexi. Yeah, what a what a beautiful interview. And like we were saying earlier, he has such a ease about him. Like you watch him and you just can't help but smile. So. Really yeah. huge seconds. congratulations to Alexi, and now we'll transition over back to the platform for Pedro Tapia de Mexico. 20. That's right. Pedro actually has some beautiful uh, constant weight technique, so I really, li I really like watching him actually. Ten. I have Five. a man from your homeland. Four. Three. Yes. <laughs> the third, the third umpire. <laughs> exactly. Bye, always, bye, always bye, bringing bye. wonderful <laughs> energy to all the divers. <laughs> yeah, for real. Good coach to have for sure. Yes. Um, Be beautiful well, technique here, right, with Pedro, and and you see, like you say, you know, you always talk about kind of um, the, the amplitude of the kick forward and back, mm -hmm. and he's pretty even actually. He's got a nice forward and backstroke flex, seconds. and he really undulates with his whole body. Um, for me, this is like 
that's like what I would aim for or shoot for if I was One minute. Uh, doing yes. this more often. So. Mm. Yes, yes. so this is Pedro's second vertical blue. Uh, he's very happy to be here again One this year, ten. representing Mexico. 80 meters. One minute 20. Ninety meters. One minute thirty. One hundred meters. Y Pedro está super relajado. One minute forty. Casi a la marca de ciento diez. Ahora está en el Candy Cane. Tiene el tag. Y ya está en la subida. Lots of control there, you know. Nice and slow, put the tag in, he knows he's got time. 100 meters. Oh, a little shaka as well, the cheek okay. of it. He's just, he's just thrown us a little shaka underwater. And there it is. It's it's very funny because last year he also gave a glance at the dive eye. And we have a big group chat within Mexico and it had become a meme. <laughs> so <laughs> so he's, no. he's carried no. on the tradition. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. we'll have a, we'll have a new one every year. <laughs> oh, that's quality, man. Love that. Oh, super good to see he's enjoying his dive. Also, that's a very strong signal that he's not really narked at Narked's, all. Yeah. He's, yeah, for real. He has total control of what's going on, even in the darkness. Yeah. He has a beautiful, beautiful arrow or flecha. He's super flexible, works on his mobility a lot in the gym, doesn't he? He's a real gym rat. Yeah, so actually both of us used to be gymnasts, so one of our challenges oh, no that we do together oh, is um, like handstand competitions, mm. or that's like part of our pre-dive training. Um, kind of <laughs> get, some, get some blood flow to the brain before. Um, <laughs> yeah, before but <laughs> before it drains out again. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the, the dive brain counter. Yeah. Yeah, he looks good, doesn't he? That's yeah, so Pedro uh, is super strong in both monofin discipline as well as no fins. It's one of his strongest and also one that he enjoys the most. I'm okay. Wow. Oh my god, come on. <laughs> I mean, give them some work. Wow, wow, wow. Super, super fresca, relajada en la superficie. Increíble. Increíble. In sí. el tag. Espera, 10 segundos más. 10 segundos más. Bueno, Pedro. Tarjeta blanca para Pedro Tapia de México. Felicidades. Super, super bien. Sí. <laughs> Unreal, unreal performance by him. And that, I mean, wow, that was the cleanest protocol I think we've seen in all competition. Yes, yes, and, yes. Um, he arrived, kit straight off, bang. Exactly, yeah. And he even signal. almost had like a little wink with it. He had a little little yeah, dance cheeky, with that. Yeah, he's cheeky, isn't he? Had some, cheeky man. Had some finesse. <laughs> uh, yeah, wow. Beautifully, beautifully done, Pedro. Yeah, perfect execution. Can't really... Uh, yeah, just flawless, really. Well, I think we can expect a bit more from him now in the comp. He'll probably yes. want to add a lot of meters onto that. I yes, mean, I lot, believe but so. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot more from him, especially with yeah, that. Yeah, I think that was he, so clean. he definitely has the capability to go a lot yeah. deeper. I mean, he was super clean at the surface. His technique is close to flawless. Um, fun fact also, he's a completely vegan athlete. Um, ah. I think there is a couple in this competition, but Pedro has been vegan for many, many years. And he's also sponsored by Birdman Protein, oh, yeah. which is a brand from uh, Mexico. Let's get that plant energy. <laughs> Wow, yeah, really good. But you don't need to really, be really beautiful. Yeah, so oh, he'll be super, well super happy with that. that one, Congratulations, yeah. felicidades. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, what have we got up next? Oh, Alenka. We have we? Alenka, yes. So, that Lax. should be a very exciting dive. This will also be her first dive 
of this year's competition. Last year she performed very well. Um, she was being known as the um, close to deepest woman in the world. However, last year she did have a couple issues with some of her dives, so we'll see what she's um, she gearing up for. She was a little sick for. last year as well, no? I think. Yes. So yes, yes. Uh, that kind of affected affected her dives for sure. Yes, yes. And yes. she has some exciting events happening this year as well. She is off to be married. Um, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Right I'm after. Florian. Right after Roatan, so that's really exciting. Yeah. Oh, that's great, isn't it? We love a wedding. I know, I know. They yeah. should do it here in the water instead. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for our benefit, because we want to be exactly. here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe it is an underwater wedding. <laughs> maybe. I mean, they're both good divers. Could be. They Could are, be. yeah. That would, be, that would be very fun to see. I'm just trying to see... Uh, if, sorry, it's a bit weird on camera actually. <laughs> Just trying to see if Here we have Tori at the beach reviewing his dive, it looks like. He's also choosing to wear the magnet to uh, hoister the lamp on his wetsuit. Yeah, he was close, wasn't he, Tori? <laughs> there he is. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's the Tori we know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <sighs> Okay, okay, so just had to use that actually link it is D N S. So looks like we'll be moving on to Roberto Guzman. Two minutes yes. to official time. I believe. Another Mexican. They're lining up today. <laughs> yes, yeah, so actually um Roberto and we do have a little bit more time um until Roberto goes. His scheduled top time is eleven oh four and it is 10.51 right now. But Roberto did his dive yesterday, his dive attempt, and he was not given uh, sufficient time for his breathe up. I believe he was given like 90 seconds or something like that. So he was able to protest the dive and essentially have a redo or a re-performance. So we wish him all the best today. It can be pretty challenging after an event like that to like Rehype yourself up, um, knowing that there was a mistake, and then going back to do your performance. However, Roberto has been in this game for many years, so I don't have a doubt in my mind that he'll be able to perform this dive. Yeah, he's a seasoned athlete, isn't he? He's he's, he's not his first rodeo. He's got the he's got a good mindset, hasn't he? So I think he'll, yeah. he'll hopefully settle down. And, and now that he's got actually he's got a bit of extra time now because Alenka's he dealing, so he's getting a <laughs> bonus. Yes, yes, a so, little bit of a um, little bit of relaxation. Hopefully he gets what he wants. Yeah, I agree. Roberto is also from Mexico. He lives in the Quintana Roo area in Playa del Carmen and has his freediving school there. Um, he is accompanied here by his girlfriend Katie, who I believe will also be coaching him today. Um, yeah, she was coaching him yesterday, I believe. Or, so, yeah, I think she's the coach. Yes, yes, Katie is also a competitor. She has competed in a few of the Azul competitions that we have in Mexico, which are in Sonote competitions. Didn't and you do that recently? I did. You I did. was I was part of that competition as well. Debut? Yes. It was, yes. Picked up some for, white cards? For depth I did all white cards, actually. <laughs> Obviously <Yes>. not <laughs> close to any of these depths, but... It ah, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it was, it was an incredible experience. And yeah, so if you guys are into freediving or you're taking your first course, like there's a thousand and one things you can do with freediving. But if you do have any kind of interest to We're get on the here. competition platform, I would definitely give it a go. Um, the experience is incredible. You meet amazing athletes from all over the world and then who knows like maybe you perform super well under the pressure and maybe you'll become a world stage athlete in the next couple of years so give it a try if you're if you're on the edge about it that's right and then we'll see you here when you get some commentary like this perfect <laughs> that's what you want really isn't it exactly <laughs> yes how was that how was that comp though it's a good one and you get it's quite uh, they have quite a lot of competitors at that comp Right? They do, yeah. So it's been it's been growing quite a bit 
um, yeah, I see, every I see year a lot of throughout the years. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I almost of... um, I almost signed up this year as well, actually. Ah, you uh, should, you I should. Know, I wish I had now, but that's all right. We'll <laughs> come back to it. See you there next year. I had a student of mine, uh, Christina Sowers. She uh -huh. actually won the competition, beat the men as well. Ah, amazing. So, huge congratulations amazing, to her. Amazing. And uh, yeah, she's Team USA now, so super okay. good. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's it's so nice that there is a lot of smaller scale competitions around too to allow the newer athletes to give it a chance. Um, here yeah. we're we're at like the top of the top, and we have this is a selection only essentially competition, so the athletes have to be invited to be able to compete at Vertical Blue. Um, so it is. It is really nice to have competitions like this for the top athletes, but it is nice that there are competitions Nine all minutes. over the world for everybody, essentially. Yeah, a bit of a lighter entry into it. It would be very daunting coming here and like, seeing <laughs> Alexi Morgan yes, just pull off a 133 meter dive, you know, on the same uh, hour that you're diving. It's like, oh, God, exactly. You know. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know I would yeah. be is, I would be super nervous if I was competing here. So I think I'll just forget <laughs> to do my breathe up. You know, I'd just be like Yeah, yeah. In awe. Your, your heart rate would be and constantly up. You'd be like, oh so nervous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Nice. Yes, so they yes. have uh that Playa Azul they do it twice a year, no? Yes, that's so correct. There's another one when? In September. Right. Did you say that already? I Sorry. don't remember. Cool. Okay. <laughs> but cool. yeah, there's another okay. one in September. Okay. Yeah, cool. Nice. And uh, actually where I'll be diving in Dominica, they're having another competition as well in November. Oh, okay. At, at Deep Dominica. So they're popping up all over at the minute, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. It's, it's amazing. The more, the more instructors there are, the more free diving schools there are. Um, the more competitions there are and then yeah the sport is growing so nicely and basically exponentially um, it's yeah. becoming really popular throughout Asia and more popular in South American countries and everything so it is really great to see I think the next following years we're gonna see a huge boom and there's also been a couple of freediving movies that have come out um, Wakanda had a bunch of freediving and that inspired a lot yeah. of um, the little ones to get in the water more so yeah I think, I think we're gonna see some avatar threes coming out oh really you know so they they've actually filmed all seven of them which is crazy wow. and they've just released two last year and now they're, they're just gonna minutes. be like just dropping wow. off so yeah maybe we're gonna see a load of free divers yeah that cool. would be that would be very exciting yeah very very exciting yeah yeah, yeah. I should say, if you do want to come to that comp with Dominica, you can come and train with me at Blue Element Freediving School. So, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> excuses, excuses for vacations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just, oh, yeah, it twist my arm off. I've got to go to another tropical island. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so we have Roberto Guzman. Um, he's at the line now. I believe the safety checks have been done. So that includes checking that the lanyard is on the line, that the official gauge is on, and that he is ready to dive. I believe we still have a couple more minutes, maybe about five minutes until so he we're sets um, off. So just getting a few questions about why Alenka was a, a no-show. I don't know if there's a specific reason, but that's not uncommon that athletes maybe will just decide not to um, do the dive when in the allotted time. They might, there can be all sorts of different reasons. Um, so yeah, but I don't think there's anything to worry about if, uh, if that's where the questions are coming from. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like yesterday we had um, Tori have a DNS and that was due to not feeling rested enough Rest is very, very essential for this sport. Um, it helps substantially with your relaxation ability. So maybe Halenka just didn't have a good night's rest. <laughs> I'm not sure. There was, I think there was a little bit of thunder last night, so maybe kept her up. But yeah, it's totally normal. And there is multiple days of the competition that she can um, go for her dive again. 
yeah, she's got time. And we're going to see great things from her. She's been doing really well in training. Um, and she's, oh, I love watching her leg dive. Her technique is stunning. Yes, very, very beautiful. Okay, so here we have yes. just a little recap of um, session two so far. Um, off to a very good start, starting with the world record and the white card done by Alexi, followed by a yellow card from early turn Tori, which is also a continental record attempt, and then Pedro just uh, was the last e athlete we saw with a national record and a white card in constant weight. Mm. Shout out to uh, Sofia Gomez, who's just logged on. Hello, mm -hmm. we're missing, missing your energy this year. Mm -hmm. and, Hola, your, and your vlogs. Hola. <laughs> and those vlogs, which I absolutely loved watching last year. Uh, yes, brilliant. yes. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah Sophia yeah. was with us last year and she had some beastie dives as well. And um, she has her operation going in Dominica. So that's, that's pretty exciting for her. She's, yeah. she's a wonderful, wonderful athlete. and very very sweet person yeah we love Sophia yeah yeah they're doing good things over in Dominica in Soufriere mm -hmm. a lovely little village yes I I'll miss it I can't wait to go back actually <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go back or go I yeah come been. visit come visit yeah, yeah. easy yeah, you, and, you and Pepe we'll come down happen. blow it up get the media going <laughs> we will we will yeah we'll get the yes. real game strong Okay, so we're just nice relaxed. Yeah, seeing Robert at the surface. Three minutes. Just about three minutes until his official top. Fashioning his best dive gear. What gear do you wear? Um, I wear a big mix of gear. Oh, yeah. um, I, I wear a lot of, I wear a lot yeah. of like hand-me-down gear, or I'll borrow some of Pepe's. But I do have um, my gear by True Dive, and then Molchanoffs. Those are my two main gear selections. Nice True Dive. Yeah, it's good. I haven't tried any of that stuff actually. I've got. Um, I've got some alchemy gear now, which I'm absolutely loving. Two minutes to really, really nice. Talk. And uh, recently lost my suit, which I'm quite sad about. But <laughs> oh no! It's okay. I know. And I'm not having much luck with gear at the minute, actually. But we should, hmm. uh, you know, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, and at least now there's there's lots of different um, companies to choose from to find your gear. So there's a lot more style options, and there's seconds. been an impressive amount of ingenuity that has gone into like fins, foot pockets, mm. um, wetsuit yeah. materials, the type of neoprene, and so yeah, there is really, really top of the line gear for the athletes. And also, if you're if you're a beginner freediver, there's a huge array of fins that are affordable, wetsuits that are affordable, comfortable masks, everything. So One minute. it really has been established to provide gear for everybody and yeah, you Yeah, you got all 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 different ranges, you know, from novice through to, to a pro athlete now that there's huge lines of um, of different stuff from carbon fins to plastic and I wonder actually if the technology, like you say, and the advancements they're making there are making a difference to the dives. And that's why we're seeing seconds. more and more progression, you know? I'm, I definitely think that there is a huge difference. Um, in the school in, in Mexico, we have 20. quite a large array of um, different, different marks, different brands for fins, wetsuits, everything. And I've tested a fair share Ten. of them. And the plastic fins versus the uh, carbon fiber, 
versus Four, the fiberglass, three, there's two, a massive one. difference in Official how you feel top. the lactic Plus acid buildup in your legs if you're three, doing bifins. Um, like the most basic six, sets we have are seven, just like a eight, plastic nine, general kind ten. of longer fin, but not super long. And if you do like a 30 meter dive with those, you definitely feel it. Whereas if you transition then to the next level, which would be like well, a fiberglass fin, month. your Next dives feel so Constant much more comfortable. You get less meter. lactic acid, all of Two that. So yeah, makes a big difference, huh? Can someone fix the sonar position, please? Okay, so Roberto has just um, oh, descended. And hopefully we'll get the dive bite up and running on him. Yeah, we got him. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 40 meters. Dive time, 40 seconds. Okay, good. So you guys are loving the nerdy information. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it up as best we can. More facts. Uh, yes, more facts. 50 seconds. Okay, here we go with Roberto in the dive bite now. Come on. Vamos, Roberto. I think a super bright meters. lamp as well. He's got his hand outreached above his head there. It's quite, quite yeah. good, I guess. Just yeah. keeping himself on the line. 70 meters. He's yeah, so this cruising, can isn't he? help a lot when you touch minute, the line. Ten. It does add a little bit of friction, but mm. if you're very comfortable at, at these depths and you have your training style down, it can help you a lot with the narcosis and just kind of keeping yourself positioned where you want to be. A lot of times right. in the water, as most of you would probably know, it kind of just carries you wherever it wants to. <laughs> so having a kind of guidance can be really, really helpful. And also to feel something in such... Oh, oh so close, Roberto. So close. No, that's 100 meters. 97 we got on the, on the candy. Yes. Oh, I can't believe that. That was so close. Just, just touched the candy cane. So, so close. Oh, <laughs> Cassie. Yeah. Aye. 70 meters. <laughs> anyway, he'll be happy with that. You know, 97 meters. 60 meters. And he got a second chance at it, so um, I hope he he can find. Yes, and I, I think he's we'll got time, hasn't he? Yeah, we'll be seeing some really strong dives coming from Roberto. He's a very consistent competitor, and he does have the stamina to do Two these dives, so. Yeah, we'll see him in, we'll see him doing some big dives in other disciplines as well. He's not, he's not a one trick pony, he's a, he's a specialist across the board. Two minutes 30. Second safety at 20 meters. Safeties are with him now. Meters. Who's that? Omar and Roberto. Yeah, we have our awesome, awesome safeties accompanying the divers every single dive, so they're getting the real, real workout today. Omar cracks me up, dude. So funny. <laughs> Katie doing some coaching, looking super fresh at the surface. I cannot believe that. He was so close, wasn't he? Ah, I know. Well, yeah. So, so close. I wonder what he'll think when he watches the, the replay video. Yeah, well done, Roberto. Nice yellow card, though. Still collect a load of points for that. So, bueno, uh, sí. Felicidades, Roberto. Estaba super, super casi. Super cerca. Look at him smiling. <laughs> Yeah, still, still with lots of enjoyment. So that's that's the important part. Um, so there's a question here about uh, Mr. Truebridge if he's competing. Um, he he's not competing this year, actually. Yes. He has um, decided to step out of the competition this year. I think uh, a few reasons for that, and I think to be honest, he's. Uh, wasn't hitting his usual form, was he? Um, he had some some time out of training, and um, yes, yeah, so he just decided to sit there. Yes, as well as being kind of the organizer for Vertical Blue, it has in the past put a lot of pressure on his performance in the water. Um, so this year he decided to not compete and just um, be with the with the athletes and overseeing the competition. Yeah, spending a lot of time with his family as well in the water around the blue hole, which is nice to see. Mm -hmm. So yes. I'm sure the kids and 
his wife will be happy about that. But always a shame not to see Will compete. He's, uh, he's a beautiful athlete to watch. His CNF obviously is second to none. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, so yes, um, our next competitor is Haniko Hirose. Uh, she is wonderful, wonderful to watch. Beautiful technique. And she, in training, has actually said that she hasn't been enjoying so much her dives. So hopefully today she will be um, on top of it and feeling the energy and positive vibes. And yeah, I'm yeah. very excited to see her. Because I've always been running into her either right before her dives or after her dives. So I haven't actually seen her in the water during trainings this year. They usually train yeah. very early in the morning, um, no matter the visibility. So they like to tr stick to a very um, regimented training system. On schedule, early. Yes. Yeah, she's a beautiful diver, though, of course, and one of the first women to dive past 100 meters, I think. Yes. Which, uh, or was the first. Four. She was. Uh, yeah. Yes, right? she was the yeah. first and then um, rivaled by Alessia. Alessia and then once again Haniko. So they've been kind of um, going one up. A bit. <laughs> yes, one up on each other. Yeah, flawless technique. You'll see here this will be a masterclass in uh, monofin technique. So um, always really nice to watch. She has a great energy, Hanako. People always get around does. her, super happy. Great person to be around. <laughs> yeah, very, very sweet. Always giggling and smiling on the beach too. She's also very, very close with Afa and they have some beautiful photo shoots together. Yeah, very, very beautiful competitor. I'm very excited to watch this dive. This is also her first day of the uh, competition this year. So she may have a little bit of uh, pre-comp nerves, but we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully she does this dive well. Yeah, always wishing her the best. Just went three minutes. Luke Coley on the sidelines. Uh, <laughs> yes, sorry scary. guys. Um, Natalia was <laughs> the first 100 meter um, record. Okay, right. Obviously, Natalia Mochinov, Mochinova. Sometimes, sometimes our brains get a little bit fried up here, so sorry for any <laughs> false information. <laughs> it's always a Mochinov first. We should know this. <laughs> And exactly. then, <laughs> really, when we ever say it, what we mean is the first person to follow a march. Two minutes to official <laughs> top. <laughs> <laughs> nice crowd forming around the perimeter as well. Dan Verhoeven. And taking lots of nice pictures of everyone. He'll probably be a bit, a bit happy with the light today. Yes, yeah, I make know. Make his job a little better. bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. One minute, he, 30 um, seconds. When asked what his perfect place to dive would be, he responded, a 50-meter sphere of seawater floating in space. <laughs> so, pretty good. <laughs> wow, what a what a very interesting answer to yeah. that question. <laughs> you will always get an interesting answer out of Don. He's an interesting guy. Yes. He's got his uh, one minute. His, his quirkiness, I like it. <laughs> Lives back in my home country of England with his wife Georgina Miller. Who's a very good a very um, <coughs> how do I say, well accoladed British athlete. Yes. Um, and they have a, a dive school together, uh, Aqua City, I think it's called, mm -hmm. down in Cornwall. So any of you Brits want to try it out, they're seconds. definitely the place to go. Probably not in winter, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be a little bit 20. cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Yes, let's go, Haniko. Ten. 
Five, back in. four, three, two, one. Official top plus one, two, Jeez, three, doing a pack sound. four, five, six, wow, that nose clip seven, very ergonomic. eight, I know it nine, is very ten. Twenty. Lots of support for um, Hanako on the Hanako, on the comments. Japan. Sophia, get my mind there. Love that. <laughs> three minutes and thirty seconds. Okay, let's go, Hanako. Let's go. We have lots of Hear support all the cheers. From, from around the platform. Beautiful technique, eh? Yes. Stunning. Yes, yes. Absolutely flawless. Twenty in the water. minutes. Yeah. You know, and then she covers her mouth when she's doing her mouth fill. Very delicate. A little bit of a twist to her fall. Maybe just because she's got one hand up. I like the silver in the water as well. It looks cool, doesn't it? I do too. It has a very nice, very nice look. And you can kind of see it for a bit longer, you know? It comes out good in the pictures. Exactly, yeah. There is there is a light on the dive eye, so having that kind of reflect mm -hmm. Probably makes it easier to see. Yeah, she looks so. really relaxed. So today and yesterday, um, we did see a couple athletes meters. put their hands over their mouths to do their mouth fill, and what uh, going even further back for mouth fill for One those of you that ten. may not know is essentially what it sounds like. You're filling your air with, uh, you're filling your mouth with extra air from your lungs, kind of the final minute, pull 20. before you get too compressed um, mm -hmm. and then all of that air from that mouth fill is used to equalize to these insane deaths that's right because basically the point is is that once you get past RV the residual volume of your lungs your lungs get so compressed by 30 meters for most people mm -hmm. that it's exceptionally difficult to bring okay. air back up from the lungs in order to um, she's reaching. She's got it. She's got it. Oh, Maybe ride the wow. ears a little bit there. I don't know. Yeah, she yeah. she slid down quite a few, at least four meters, meters, I think. Yeah. So mouth fill for these deeper dives. That's the, the safest way to do it. You know, you, you, there is a you can reverse pack if you're extremely flexible and bring little packets of air up to the guys, but you have to have a very flexible diaphragm to be able to do that. So most yes. athletes, the safer option is to go with for this mouth fill technique. Seventy meters. Put it in the, in the Manage it there. Yeah. Now we're getting loads of comments about Aqua City and Cornwall. Now that's great. <laughs> Becky Ward, ice swimmer. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice. Fifty meters. Could do with a Cornish pasty right now. If we could get one delivered, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> You ever had one of those? Nope, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a, it's basically a British empanada. Ah, okay. Get it. And it's, yeah, they're pretty good. Pretty good. Like a thicker pastry, more like a bread pastry than a, okay. not as, yeah. Okay. Uh, look at Hanako, still saying super relaxed. And she chooses to carry the uh, tag in her hand. Some athletes do choose to do this, but then if they get tired, there's the risk of dropping it out. Ten meters. Yeah, she's a pro though. Beautiful technique from Anako. Yeah, just yeah, now just approaching to watch. the surface. Stand, Perfect stand, form. Stand. There we go. <laughs> Clean as you like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> shaking the ears maybe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My God. Uh, Lovely to see. Congratulations, congratulations. To Sanico. Beautiful, beautiful dive. She definitely had that stretch going towards the bottom plate, but <laughs> yeah. she made it. She, she made really, it. really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
awesome job, Hanneko. Yeah, beautiful dive. Always great to watch her. Fantastic. See everyone getting around her. She's um, she's uh, a regular occurrence at this competition. She is, yes. Yes, yes. She's become friends with, I think, almost all of the athletes here throughout the years, especially the ones that have returned. Um, but yeah, she's she's so, so beautiful to watch. And she actually has a very beautiful story, too, of how she started freediving, or at least where she gets the inspiration. Um, as a young girl, her father was a fisherman, and she would go with him on the boat and then um, jump in the water. And a lot of times she would end up swimming with the dolphins near her. So that kind of inspired her to pick up the monofin technique. Um, That's and right. Yeah, she she has some beautiful content as well. Her with some dolphins on the monofin on her Instagram, you can check and yeah. You can yeah, she says see. doesn't she that when when she's yeah you can see it right. She's, <laughs> that's why she's so good at it. And, and she always says like something she thinks about when she's underwater. She imagines that she's like literally a dolphin yeah. swimming underwater and doing these dives. Yes. So, yeah, she's very connected to the ocean and um, yellow card. And then if you are unable to do your service protocol um, then you'll get a red card or if you black out or have a strong LMC and, and don't get the protocol correct or do it in the wrong sequence um, that yeah. would be a red or card or go, well, yeah. go over the allotted time to do the protocol right. yes yeah. yes yes that's essentially yeah, the structure of it um, and just to add to get the white card you must present a tag which is kind of like a verification that you made it to the bottom plate all of the athletes do have the official gauges as well this year by Garmin um, so <laughs> that is also a way to check the depth however the tag is the real signifier that you made it to the plate and then, yeah, so if you have that as well as the protocol, then you're good to go with a white card. Also, with the white card, you get the total amount of points. So you basically get a point per meter that you dive. That's the general minutes. rule of thumb. Um, and then if you get an early turn, if you have an early turn, you get some points still, but you're... Um, less the amount that you didn't make it to the plate if that makes sense and then a red card you get no points it's basically the same as a disqualification yeah so if you did if you announce 100 meters and you did 50 mm -hmm. obviously you'd get less 50 but yeah. then also less one for the yellow card so you get 49 mm -hmm. points exactly right? yes correct and then for this competition, um, each discipline, you are allotted 100 points. So you can get 100 points in CNF, free immersion, and constant weight, which is either bifins or constant weight. And 100 points is a maximum you can have. And it's it's taken as a Two minutes to your dive top. as a percentage of the top dive. So for free immersion right now, it's Alexi Molchanov. He's got a 133 meter dive. If you did a 100 meter dive, you would get that proportion of points uh, that 100 meter is of 133 yes. as a percentage. <laughs> yes, yeah. correct. It's a little complicated. <laughs> correct, but, yeah. a little bit complex, but yeah. If you have a pen and paper, it makes a little bit more sense, but. Yeah, grunts and maths. Okay, so. <laughs> One minute, 30 uh, seconds. We've got a minute and 30 seconds till our next official top, which yes. is, is Mizuzu. Mizuzu. Mizuzu Okamoto Fantastic. from Japan. Mm -hmm. Coached by uh, Tetsuo, who we saw this morning, the oldest freediver in the competition, even though he doesn't yes. look it, <laughs> or he doesn't look his age. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, Misuzu, we also saw yesterday. Um, this will be a one minute uh, repeat dive, right? Uh, yeah. He, Misuzu yes. was dived yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me get. Yeah. Yes results from yesterday and she will also be the last diver of the second session and then we'll have another 30 minute break um, maybe a little bit longer and then um, we'll have the last session of the day Mizuzu did a 90 meter dive yesterday uh, okay so, so today she's doing that by three meters three meters more 
20. And um, yeah, white card for her yesterday. In. 10. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Official top. Plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mitsuzu Okamoto, Japan. Constant weight, 93 meters. 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Lovely technique. See that top half of the body nice and locked right from the rib cage up. And then beautiful flex down the body. Yes, and she chooses to do slightly quicker kicks on the way down, but with a little bit less amplitude. Sometimes we see this um, in inverse for a lot of the athletes. They do bigger stroked kicks at the surface and then the smaller kicks on their way back up. Um, we'll also see her do small kicks on the way up. But yeah, she does have some of the best mono fin technique, I think, out of, out of the women here. Mm. 50 seconds. Yeah, the Japanese athletes all have extremely good technique, actually. Yes, um, they do a lot of pool training. A lot, a lot yeah. of pool training. One minute. Yeah, so yeah, they, the shows, they, have the, they, yeah they have the time to master those techniques, and then mm -hmm. when they do training, um, depth training, then essentially One they just have to work then. on their equalizing because their technique is so dialed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful free fall here. Nice relaxed position, meters. chin tucked. One minute twenty. Yeah. And still looking meters. really strong, super relaxed. Her head position is nice and tucked in. Sometimes you'll see the athletes uh, tucking their chin One even more forward. just to push that extra meters. bit of air they may have into their ears. Touchdown. Nice, and she grabs the tag, sticking it in her hood, it looks like. In her VB vertical blue <laughs> hat. We love that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, stunning technique. It's so good to watch, actually. Just so fluid, you know, so smooth. Yeah. A um, couple of questions about official top. Um, so... It's you have an official top time. Uh, they'll give you a countdown: two, two minutes, minutes one minute, thirty, one minute, thirty meters. seconds, and then fifteen, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Official two top. One, two, three, four, five. Afterwards, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. If they get to thirty after the official top, and you pass that time you will be disqualified. So you have 30, just under 30 seconds, seconds after 30. your official top to start your dive. Yes, that is correct. Meters. Feeling like a mermaid. <laughs> yeah, looking very, very relaxed. Diver inside. 10 yeah, meters. she's cruising. Mm. Grab some fishies in the dive eye. <laughs> Watching the athletes. Okay, here she is. Taking good recovery breaths. Nose clip signal. And she says, I'm okay. Really beautiful protocol. Yeah, perfect spot on, was it? <laughs> Too easy. Even the judges are laughing. Yes, so the competition does allow viewers. Uh, congratulations. White card for Miss Suzu. Second white card for this competition for her. Amazing job. Congratulations. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, uh, you are allowed to come view this competition. Um, it's open to the public. We are located in Long Island, um, Dean's Boo Hole in the Bahamas. And yeah, there's a little platform around the divers, which you can kind of float around and watch the dives get pretty close close in on the action. 
um, and it is a beautiful location. And actually, most freediving competitions around the world are open to the public, and including the pool freediving. Um, so yeah, it, it would be great if, if you know of any competitions near you, yeah, go go support the athletes, go get a taste of what freediving is, maybe it'll inspire you to compete yourself. But yes, they are they are open to come and view. Get involved. Exactly. Okay, so that was our last diver for session two. We'll be having a camera break, and then we will have the next diver for session three, Pati Lau, at 12 o'clock. Our day, time. Kick us off with some CNF. Yes, exactly. So Very stay nice. tuned. It's going to be a really, really great dive to watch. And once again, congratulations to Misuzu. Yeah, perfect dive. Well done. All right, so we'll see you guys after the break. Yes. All right, get your popcorn and everything. Bye, guys. Okay, so I'm.
go. Hit the speaker box loud. Hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound.
go. Hit the speaker box loud. Hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound. Stop to the 
box loud Hitting that stuff till you hearing that sound
Hello everyone, welcome back to session three. We have our first diver set up on the line, Pati Lao from China. He will be doing an amazing CNF dive attempt, so we wish him all the best. He's sporting a true dive suit, which you will see in a second when we pan over. We hope you all had an enjoyable break. Got some snacks, bathroom break. For this last session, it will just be myself, Eliette, in the booth, and then Harry will be on the beach, hopefully getting some interviews with the um, divers from the middle session and also from this last session. It's always really nice to hear from the athletes right after a dive of what they were thinking during their dive, what their kind of style flow has been going into the competition. Um, what they thought about the first day, that was definitely um, a little bit nerve-wracking, I think, for a lot of athletes. So it's very interesting to see what goes on in the competitor's mind. So we have Potty fixing his flotation noodle a little bit. So CNF, like we touched on earlier, is the discipline where you have no seconds. fins on your person. You are just using your arm stroke and a leg kick. Similar to kind of a 20. big frog stroke is the easiest way to understand this discipline. Um, it may look easy when these athletes do it, but it is something that Ten. is quite difficult uh, as far as technique goes. There's a very particular way that you should circle your ankles and your knees in order to get the proper efficiency from your kick, as well as streamlining your arm pull. Pati has beautiful, beautiful technique in this discipline, so we'll, we'll be commenting on how he does it so efficiently. Yeah, so here you can really see how he glides as close to his chest as possible with his hands on his way to bring his arms over his head. And then he does a pull down very effectively, widening his arms just enough. He's now gone into the free fall, just doing a couple of kicks just with his legs to get some extra push, extra speed. And there we see him drop his arms down, sticking his thumbs in the band just to get as relaxed as possible. Looking really, really good. Just now reaching the 50 meter mark, 10 more meters to go. We've got this putty. And actually something interesting, we've seen a couple competitors um, wearing very thin wetsuits without uh, arms attached. And Potty is wearing an extremely thin, similar to the paper-like wetsuits. However, it is a complete suit and extremely water wicking. Um, it's almost kind of like a plastic covering. So he's able to just glide through the water flawlessly and it's pretty skin tight. So there's very, very little drag by this wetsuit. Okay, looking really strong on these kicks the way up. You can see the amplitude of which he opens his legs isn't as grand as you would think it would need to be. Most of the push comes from the inner part of the calf and the flat part of the ankle and foot. That's where you're able to see the most surface area on anybody's body and effectively push the water down to propel yourself upwards. Yeah, looking really strong. Obviously, this discipline takes a lot of oxygen from you. It takes a lot of energy. It's just approaching the surface, looking super fresh. Good signal. And he said, I am OK. The 
He presents the tag. <laughs> Big smile on his face, now just waiting for the judges. Awesome. Potty receives a white card. Congratulations. Really beautiful dive. He's a he's an incredible no fins artist to watch. Uh, Potty is also a very very good photographer. Uh, you can follow his Instagram page. Um, I think if you just type in Potty, it should come up. Um, he has some beautiful footage with humpback whales and sperm whales, and uh, he's been before the competition started doing a lot of photo shoots with some of the athletes <laughs> and he's supported here by Mia uh, he'll be very very happy with that dive what a great way to start the competition for Potty congratulations here's the replay you can see that form how how rapid he descends his arms and pulls through the water that's giving him a huge push every time very necessary for this discipline. <laughs> awesome, so we did have some people getting their popcorn. <laughs> um, okay, also we did get a comment uh, asking the temperature of the water. I don't think we've touched on that yet. So it's about 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. Um, so pretty, pretty nice conditions, uh, even a little bit warm for some of the athletes. That's why we have seen some athletes wearing much thinner wetsuits. Um, kind of the, I guess, normal standard for a lot of freedivers is to wear like a three millimeter wetsuit. Um, but this obviously depends on how cold you get, how quickly. Um, the colder you are freediving, the less relaxed you can be. Okay. We are going to do a beach interview now with Harry and Tori. Okay, guys, I'm now joined by Tori George, Hello. current continental record holder. Thank you, Harry. Best in the West. That's what they're calling him. We're the junior varsity team on the Western Hemisphere. Thanks for wearing your headband today, Harry. Well, I appreciate it. We hate to support you, Tori. I heard he was wearing it during the dive like I requested. Wait, no, I didn't request that. He just did it. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. All up, all up. So, Tori, why don't you uh, talk us through your dive today, and also maybe why what happened yesterday as well? Oh, well, uh, yesterday I laid in bed, didn't get enough sleep, and uh, I guess it was competition nerves. Couldn't have been anything else, but I think it would have been suicide for me to do the dive yesterday, given I had no sleep. It takes a lot out of you to do these kind of dives, especially if you haven't had rest. And uh, what else? So, and today... You were going for the new continental record, which is breaking your own, I believe. Correct. And that was 117 meters, yeah? I'm going to let you hold the mic as well. I'll you do it. Correct. I'll do it. So, yes, my current continental record is 116. I just did that in Peng Lao at the Asian Cup. And today I announced 117. I felt really good. Uh, Alexi preceded me, and I kind of liked it. It was like building a stage. It was like going on stage. I really enjoyed it. The atmosphere was amazing. That had nothing to do with it. Um, everything went to plan except for my last EQ at about 105 meters. The right ear EQ, the left one didn't, and uh, I squeezed out another 9 meters, so I had to turn at 114 meters today. So about 3 meters shy, but made it back to the surface, super clean, or so I'm told, but also very gnarly. Yeah, you had a clean surface protocol, a little bit of narcosis, but uh, looked strong, mate, looked strong, recovered well. And, you know, we were having a little chat earlier. You're kind of climbing into new territory for you, this, this, this area between 110 meters, 120. That's a new zone for you, right? Correct. Uh, I spent most of this season between 100 and 110. Nailed a bunch of dives. It's a very comfortable area for me now. I'm relatively the new kid on the block within 110 and 120 meters, so it makes sense that something like this could happen. And uh, I think it's just growing pains, so to speak. And uh, EQ is usually not an issue, but maybe it's something I need to uh, work on. I'll definitely get it next time. Very cool, very cool. Well, we love watching you dive, and uh, thanks very much. Thanks for having me, Harry. Okay. Uh Awesome interview, Harry. Thank you, and thank you, Tori. Um, yeah, equalization is something I think every freediver at some point is going to have to deal with. It's definitely <laughs> challenging at times. Um, very, very 
finicky with the One amount of minute. space you have within your eustachian tubes, but I, I guarantee we'll see Tori do some really good clean equalization, proper dives coming up. So the next diver we have is Marine Simonis from Belgium, and she will also be doing a CNF dive. Beautiful in this discipline as well. She has such a grace with her in the water and in general. She also chooses to wear a form of fluid goggles. 30 seconds. And also very matching with her wetsuits. 20 seconds. And we've had a couple chats with um, Marine during the training days. And she said she actually Ten hadn't seconds. been practicing CNF as much. She's been doing a couple competitions Five, in four, France near three, Nice and two, been focusing more one, on monofin, one, which she is also two, very, very gifted three, at. So four, this will be her five, first six, true CNF seven, dive this competition season. Marie. Belgium, constant weight, no fins, 59 meters, Woo. 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Allez, allez, Marine. Simonis, thank you. Yeah, you can see that beautiful, beautiful form as well. Like I said, super fluid through the water. She has the right combina combination and time as far as when she does her kicks and pulls. Super streamlined. You can see her body position is almost parallel with the line. Staying nice and relaxed. Very good head position. 40 meters. 50 seconds. Yeah, very strong free fall. She looks like she's going at a very nice rate. You can see the lanyard dragging behind you is also kind of a good um, way to know how fast you're going. There we are at the candy cane. Perfect. Head to the plate. Yeah, she has room for more, I bet. So Marine has been enjoying a lot playing around in the sand falls and just training in Dean's Blue Hole since she arrived. We've been shooting lots of videos and photos with her. Very, very elegant diver. <laughs> and just reaching the surface, nose clip, goggles. Wow, looking super, super fresh. Beautiful protocol. And she has the tag <laughs> and a big smile. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, congratulations, Marine. Superbe. <laughs> bueno, also, if you know, <laughs> if you are a free diver, if you know free divers, you'll know that blowing your nose is not something to be ashamed of. It's something we all do. Have to make sure our sinuses are very, very clean for the dives. Uh, huge congratulations to Marine. It was her first dive of the competition, and so far she's off to a white card start. Here we see Marlene's replay. Yeah, you can really see so well how relaxed she is. Beautiful head position. 
If your head position is um, too locked with your chin too far to your chest, it can um, cause some like blockage from your oh, airflow. As well as if your head is like arched backwards, then it stretches your eustachian tubes out more and it's harder for the air to go in to be equalized. But yeah, Marine and all of the athletes here have very, very good control of this area as these are the top, top in the world. All right, and I believe we're going to be doing a beach interview in a couple moments, and then we will have our next diver. Hey guys, I'm now joined by Marco Cosentino from Italy, who is the Chief of Safety at Vertical Blue. Um, so we're going to check in with him. How things going, Marco? It's going very well today, after yesterday. So today has been an easy day, let's say. You had a little bit of uh, maybe some athletes' nerves yesterday, lots of red cards, and probably a lot of work for the safety team, huh? A lot of work for the safety team on the platform and underwater, but also a lot of work for the medics on the beach because we had uh, several let's say, squeeze uh, with different kind of severity, but then in the end we, we did manage to, to fix everything. And so the athletes now are resting, and most probably some of them will be will be diving in the coming days, but a couple of them maybe will have to stop the comp competing at least for this vertical blue. Very nice, very yeah. cool. And so do you guys keep them under a little bit of observation after they dive if they have some problems like that, and then Maybe are they encouraged to take a day or two or take a little bit easier for the rest of the comp? Yeah, this is up to the medical team to decide this kind of, uh, let's say, procedures. We have procedures, but then it's up to them to decide if they have to rest for how many days, and we just need to trust what our medics are, are, uh, are, are uh, let's say, suggesting to these athletes. Because our medics are working with us since years, and so they know exactly which are the complications that, that can come with these specific incidents in freediving. Amazing, thank you so much. And uh, you're drawing on a lot of experience. You've worked at this competition before and you work in a lot of different competitions doing safety, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working uh, on several different uh, competitions on safety. I'm working also for the IDA safety committee and I'm in the Vertical Blue since the very beginning. I've missed only first year in 2008, but then since 2009, I've been always here because uh, William is one of my greatest friends, so yeah. Fantastic. Well, we all really appreciate the efforts that you guys make on the safety team, and uh, you're always doing a lot of good work, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you. Bye. Awesome. Thank you again for that interview. Um, yeah, the safety team, honestly, they are super heroes, literally. The amount of dives they do per day and the trainings they do, like, over time to ensure the safety of all the athletes here is... Uh, incredible really 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 incredible and they're also so full of energy for the amount of dives they do per day it's absolutely incredible that they're able to keep up their spirits and even if it's a harder day like yesterday um, we saw they were really put to the test but at the end of the day they were all laughing smiles dancing a little bit and then making sure the platform is ready for the consecutive day so Brava to all of the safety athletes. Give them some love, guys. Okay, we have our next athlete now on the line, Junko Kitahana. She is also from Japan, and this will be a free immersion dive, 58 meters. One minute. Thank you for the compliments, guys. Again, if you have any questions, uh, give me a shout out, write it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Or if you'd want to say hi to any of your friends that you're watching, let me know and I can give them a hug for you. 30 seconds. Twenty. Five. 
Five, four, three, two, one. Official top plus one, two, three. Okay, Junko Five, is doing her packing six, and giving an seven, extra pinch eight, to the nose clip, nine, making sure it stays on during that movement. And there she goes, descending. Junko Kitahama, Japan. Pre immersion, 58 meters, 2 minutes and 35 seconds. Okay, Junko is showing us her beautiful free immersion form. You can see how close her toes are together to each other. Her legs are together. That creates a really streamlined body position and allowing her to uh, have her strokes move her more efficiently through the water. And then she also does a nice little kind of relaxation flop with her hands. As you can see, they kind of go behind her body. So as soon as she does the strong part of her pull, she goes right back into relaxing that arm, saving as much oxygen as possible. 40 meters. Last two. Okay, so one of the questions, how many dives does each safety do in a day? So there is a substantial amount of safeties. I think we have six safeties um, this year on the team. And there is a rotation between the sessions um, or depending on the divers, they kind of have a roster for themselves to um, see who does what dive. But roughly you could say between 20 and 30 dives per day, ranging between depths of 30 and 10 meters. You have three diver, safety divers meeting every diver, one at 30 meters, one at 20 meters, and one at 10 meters. Okay, so Junko has made it to the surface. Looks like she had a clean protocol. Okay, and she receives a yellow card. Still very beautiful dive. She had just an early turn at around 42 meters, so that's where the yellow card came from. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, the, the safety divers are diving a lot per day. Um, yeah, you could expect around that 20 to 30 mark. Um, we can ask them specifically later. Uh, maybe get a little diagram of their dive watch. I'm sure it's pretty interesting. Um, not all of these dives are to 30 meters because every diver, they switch the rotation. So sometimes when the camera is in the water, you'll see them with like a hand signal, one, two, or three, and then that'll signify which, um, which order they go in to safety each diver. And... Yeah, so we have about six and a half minutes until our next diver. So I'll read up on some of more some more of the questions to answer, and we might have a beach interview if we find somebody else. I'm not sure yet. We still have a couple of spectators around watching the dives. We have the Garmin guys in the water, our awesome sponsor for this event. Um, I rode with them this morning and got some interesting information just about them. And they have lots of travels coming up. Uh, ben is heading to Taiwan soon and Jasmine to New York. And yeah, their, their team is pretty strong. This is the first freediving Garmin event that they have been to. So they're, they're here kind of analyzing the watches that they have for the um, sponsorship and seeing like what they can add, implement. Uh, if you haven't tried or seen the Garmin watches, they are pretty amazing. They have an incredible array of features, running, cycling, breath holding, heart rate, everything. 
that you could imagine and it's super intuitive and very easy versatile to use so they're very very comfortable we have also a giant Five Garmin minutes. float in the back to add to the sponsor we also have the flags kind of around um, above the alcove of the blue hole so the atmosphere here is really pretty impressive um, when the intro video comes on you can kind of see where we are the location the white sandy beaches and yeah if you want to participate in the future um, bb has been happening yeah since 2008 so it's a very long-standing competition um, you can send an email or message the VB Instagram page to get some more information of how you can contribute or participate in the event, um, as well as all of the other freediving competitions around the world. If there's one that's closer to you, reach out to the lo local organization and then you can yeah, volunteer, become a safety diver, you can become a commentary person as well. Um, doesn't hurt to ask any of the organizations. So hopefully that answers some of your guys' questions. So Alessia is not here this year. I think she's been pretty busy with some other competitions. Um, I do believe she's going to be in some of the uh, European competitions. Yeah, so the underwater camera we have is called the Dive Eye. And it's basically like a minion shaped water robot with a super strong camera on it. There's also a light above the camera system and it's fed by a winch um, on a cord that follows the divers down to these depths. I think I said yesterday to Harry that it is so impressive that within such a niche sport, such as freediving, that is definitely growing, that we can actually see the athletes perform at depth. I mean, 10 years ago, that was totally impossible. Like there was some versions of the GoPro and the 360 cameras coming out where you could film obviously a little bit, but nothing compared to the depths that any of the divers were performing and that continues to increase so with the help of the dive eye it's it's so incredible that we're able to follow these athletes in the way that we are two minutes to official top One minute, 30 seconds. minute. Okay, so our diver Claire Paris is representing the US and she will be doing a dive of 55 meters also in CNF. And her dive time announced is 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I'll talk a little bit about the dive time as soon as she goes below the surface. Ten. Five. 
five, four, three, two, one. Official top, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so here we go. Let's go, Claire. Ale, ale. Let's see. Claire has been diving for quite a few years. I can find out the exact number. Um, she is a very, very beautiful diver. She does a lot of efforts with conservation. She's a scientist and actually she's done quite some specific um, studies here in Dean's Blue Hole regarding the frequencies um, of the, the sand and the tides that affect any marine life, um, animal life. It's, it's pretty interesting when she talks about it. I think there is a couple articles also that she's written about it. So if you if you look her up, you can probably find those. Looks like she had a moment where she th thought she might have wanted to do an early turn, but there she is at the plate. Maybe she squeezed through an equalization. Okay, so she lost the cord a little bit for that one pull, but now steady on the way up. Okay, yeah, and so the oldest competitor we have here is 57, and that is Tetsuo. And the youngest, I believe, is Arno, and he is 27. And he started freediving in his early uh, 20s. I'm not sure when Tetsuo started. I can also find that out and probably answer that question tomorrow. Okay, still looking really strong. You can see she's letting the buoyancy lift her a little bit. Sure, her cycles between kicks and pulls are still quite close. Probably getting a little bit tired, a little lactic. I think she just removed her nose clip. And she's searching for the surface. Come on, Claire. Good recovery breath, strong signal. Yeah, Claire is really, really amazing. I think searching for the tag. Sometimes it's a difficult search. We had a long search yesterday as well, so <laughs> maybe she'll beat that record. <laughs> Come on, Claire, find the tag. Yeah. 
Davide is helping her find this. <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> Claire has the tag. It got a little bit hidden. <laughs> there we go. And the judges presented her with a white card. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very, very strong dive by Claire. <laughs> awesome replay, there she is with the tag. <sighs> that was also her first dive of this competition. Uh, she also competed last year at Vertical Blue and did pretty well. Every time she comes to the depth competitions, she always says, she's like, oh, okay, I have to review the videos of all of the great athletes, Alexi, Arnaud, to refocus on my equalizing. Uh, I believe she does a lot of like pool training and dry training. Um, however, doesn't get to perform depth training as often as she would like. Um, she is a professor. So she has quite the busy, busy lifestyle, but it's very great that she has the time to continue her passion of freediving here. Okay, and our next diver who is at the line is Vanessa Estol. She is from Uruguay. And this is her first competition at Vertical Blue. She has competed in a few of the smaller competitions in Mexico. One that I was mentioning earlier, Azul Freediving Challenge. She did very well in that one. And yesterday she also had a successful white card dive. So congratulations for her yesterday's performance and we wish her the best for the performance she's about to do now. She's going a couple meters more than yesterday's dive. And this will be a constant weight by Finn's dive. Two minutes to official top. One minute, 30 seconds. Okay, so we have just under two minutes until Vanessa begins her dive. <laughs> Lots of excitement for Claire. One minute. Okay, so I just got 20. a word that Claire is uh, 64, but 
I'm not sure if it's appropriate to give off a woman's age. <laughs> um, however, yeah, so that does make her actually the Five, oldest competitor four, in this competition. Three, and what two, a beautiful one. competitor oh, she is as well. One, Absolutely two, incredible three, dive she just did. Four, so five, six, this sport seven, is clearly eight, for everybody. Nine, Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, Vanessa. Vanessa is gone. Uruguay. Vamos, Uruguay. Super linda la forma. Ay, con los pececitos. So Vanessa has a very interesting background. She is actually a Everest uh, guide she she guides people the way up to mount everest very very impressive she got into that in 2016 just starting to like recreationally climb mountains and then she figured that she could start bringing groups and doing kind of like retreat style that's now become her full-time gig she has some amazing photos and videos on her instagram as well so you can check out vanessa Stoll and go see her content. So she she really does some pretty insane diving if you think she can climb all the way up to the peak of Everest and then dive down to 55 meters in apnea. She really gets the best of both worlds, honestly. I expect uh, in this competition and in the following years, she'll have some really, really strong performances. And this is a national record attempt for Uruguay. 30 meters. Y vamos Vanessa, vamos Uruguay. Ayer ella estaba muy nerviosa, pero hizo su buceo súper, súper fácil, linda. Y creo que hoy ella tiene menos de nervios. Okay, looking fresh. Good signal. And she is actually one of the only athletes here that is using a mask, like a normal freediving mask. So this one, she doesn't fill with water. She still has to equalize the air. And for 55 meters, that is quite deep to be equalizing Equalizing a mask. Uh, felicidades. Tarjeta blanca. Otro. <laughs> so if you lose your tag that you retrieve from the bottom, you are given a yellow card. It's basically just like one point off from the total points that you would receive for that dive. Sí, de verdad es todo relajada, super bien, super cómoda en el agua. Felicidades. Uh, but yeah, so as I was saying a little bit, um, most of the divers here do just wear a nose clip or fluid goggles, which you put water into so you don't have to equalize the air spaces. Um, if you don't equalize the air spaces in goggles or something that you're wearing on your face, you can have like a little squeeze, basically a bursting of the blood vessels because the pressure is so intense. So with a mask, diving really past 30 meters with a mask is a little bit difficult because you have to use the air that you could be using to equalize through your eustachian tubes to your ears for your mask. So it's kind of an expulsion 
of the excess air that you have. So as you get deeper and deeper, it is a lot harder to dive with a mask. Obviously, if you have proper lung capacity and do a proper breathe up, it is possible, but it is another factor that you have to consider. Oh. Okay, so now we have our next diver, uh, actually our last diver of the day, uh, Hung Ming. Hopefully I pronounced that right as well. And this diver will be diving under the One Ocean flag. And to finish up the day with another CNF dive. This dive will be to 43 meters and a dive time of 2 minutes 10 seconds. Okay, let's go Mia. Two minutes to official top. So she is also a diver that chooses to sit upright. This can be a lot more comfortable. Um, many different reasons. However, you can see that her where her lungs are, they're already like halfway through the water. So that can add a little bit more pressure um, and decrease the volume, not by too much, but decrease the volume of um, air seconds. that you can take in. One minute. seconds. Good looking super 20. relaxed at the surface. It can also kind of play the other way around if you're the last diver of the session of the day. It can put a little bit of extra pressure Ten. on you sometimes. Five, four, three, two, one. Official top plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty. Okay, there she goes. I pay. Constant weight, no fins, forty three meters. Looking like she has some pretty good technique. You can see her kick is a lot wider than we've seen a lot of the athletes do. I really don't know this athlete as well as the others, so I'm not sure how long she has been in competition. 
perform is still very good, but a little bit bigger of an amplitude sometimes uses a little bit more oxygen than you would like. So with practice and training, technique will improve and efficiency will improve as well. Okay, there she has reached the bottom plate, grabs the tag. She has done the pull and now on the way up. Yeah, gliding through the water, letting that buoyancy kind of carry her up through. I know for me it's such a wonderful feeling once you get past kind of your neutral buoyancy point on your way up from a no fins dive. You just feel the water kind of floating you up. It's like another moment that you can relax some extra. But still looking super strong, really close to the surface. Really nice recovery breaths. Good signal. Awesome. So she is our last diver of the day. And then as soon as we know what the judges are going to give, that will be the end of session two, or day two and session three. Awesome. So she receives a white card. Congratulations. So that wraps up day two, you guys. We have one more day of competition until uh, we have a day break. So tomorrow we'll come back with you. Lots of energy and more incredible dives. When the start list comes out on the uh, social media pages, take a look and get ready. Tomorrow's going to be amazing. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you tomorrow.